All right, here we go, Tony Yale. Welcome first. back. Yo, yo, passport boys in the building. Yeah, passport boys in the building. You see what's going on out there, man. And uh. you know, um, shout out to Vlad, man. I, I I like doing Vlad interviews. I feel comfortable, you know. I just came back from LA to Emmys. I was around a lot of stars. You know, shout to 50, Dre, Eminem on winning the Emmys, Mary J. Blige, Super Bowl performance. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing performance. Yep. And Facts. you know how I come back, you know what I'm saying? I come back with a whole bunch of treats, you know what I'm saying? This the, is this the best thing about, and I got my strand coming soon. This is the best thing about ma marijuana is that you can fly back, you know, with it. You know what I'm saying? That's the Luigi. That's some of the best OG. You know what I'm saying? What we got here? Kush Company. You know what I mean? I shout out all these strands. What we got? We got some drips. You know what I'm saying? What we got? If everybody smoked, there would be peace in the world. Alien Labs, one of my favorite strands. Just watch me. I'm a connoisseur of this shit. Pure. Is this pure pack? I think it's pure pack. Is this pure pack? Life is great, man. Coming back from the Emmys, man. Smoke some of that good Luigi. I'm going to put this away, though. We're going to smoke one. Rest in peace to PNB Rock, too, man. Right. Word. It's fresh off the plane. I'm going to put this away. Go ahead. Well, let's talk about that because we all are in a state of shock right now. Maybe about 30 minutes ago, everyone got yeah. the news. A couple hours ago, we heard about it, he got shot. I just got off the plane and just was on my way here, and I heard he uh, passed away, unfortunately. 30 he, years old. Yeah. 30 years old. It's, Young guy. It's, it's, very, it's very unfortunate, man. You know what I mean? And rest in peace to um, PNB Rock. He had, you know he had a song with 50, Crazy. Okay, I didn't yeah, know that. I feel like, yeah, PNB Rock was on that. Rest in peace to him. He worked with 50. Did you know him at all? Um, I think I met him maybe once, you okay. know, but I know he had the song with 50. Mm -hmm. And he was a dope artist, you know, on the come up, you know what I mean? So rest in peace to him. Yeah, it's a very sad situation. He was uh, at the South Central Roscoe's, I, I guess, mean, with his girlfriend. I mean, I mean, that's, ain't that the Blood Roscoe's? Might be. I mean, either way, both of them could be dangerous because I could have sworn it was like a Blood Roscoe's and a Crip Roscoe's, but I don't know. You know, but I've been going to LA for the longest and you know, I so much shit happened with us that you just always be on point. And right now it's just like we had at times where everywhere is dangerous. Yeah. LA, dangerous. Atlanta, dangerous. New York, dangerous. Chicago, dangerous. Philly, dangerous. St. Louis, dangerous. So I mean, I think you gotta think like a stick up kid. If you a rapper, you gotta think like a stick up kid. Yeah, I mean, remember I told you before, if you got that fly car, you better have that hoopty too. Right, switch it up. You have to. Yeah, because you a target. I mean, the story goes that he was at the the Roscoe's with his girlfriend. His girlfriend actually posted on Instagram, right, where they were. Well, I mean. You know how Instagram is. Sometimes you just post and you don't really think about it. Right. Well, it's, it was actually tagged Roscoe's on the actual. You know how they post a story I mean, and it says do, where, where it is? People do it all the time. No, it's, it's, it's messed up. I smoke weed all day. I could have did that and said posted that. And, yeah. And didn't even know it's just do it all the time. But, you know, you got to be careful. Right. I mean, it almost reminds me of the Pop Smoke situation. Because remember, right before he got killed, he had posted up. Right. Basically pictures of himself with a bunch of designer stuff. And I think he flashed the Well, address. when it come down to the come down, it's like when you really think about it, every rapper is a target. Right, Flay? Yeah. You a target. I mean, I came up with 50 Cent, so it was different because he was a target before he blew. He got shot nine fucking times. Yeah. We was riding around in a burgundy minivan with no AC. You know what I'm saying? But if you didn't get to that car in time, that nigga hit the gas on you. <laughs> Like, till this day, I don't walk to my car fast or nothing because, yo, bro, nobody's exempt from nothing. You ain't see the feds run up in Trump crib, right? Right. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that should tell you, like, nobody ain't Harvey Weinstein, every, all Kelly, anybody can get it. Like, Cosby. you not exempt, nobody's exempt from the feds, nobody's exempt from, from the stick-up kids. You know, being being around G Unit, there was a lot of stick up niggas around us. I ain't gonna lie to you. So I seen the way they move. These niggas be hungry. So now a nigga know in New York know what a Richard Milley is. They know what an AP is. Mm -hmm. They know that this shit could change their life. You know, I like chains too. This chain costs a ticket, but you know, I'm not just gonna be um, 
in the middle of somewhere, in the middle of the hood, Compton or somewhere, or in the middle of the Bronx, where where motherfuckers gonna be like, Merry Christmas. Right. You know? Cause that's how a nigga in the street think when they see this shit. Merry Christmas. Yeah. And it's like as a rapper, you, you know, you gotta get this shit, it's nice shit, but you know what I'm saying? You gotta be in a down with a nigga like 50. Bro, we are we I had a bulletproof. Banks had a bulletproof. 50 had a bulletproof. And they all got shot up, burnt up, all kinds of shit. Wait, got burnt up? It's it's in writing. They okay. all got shot up, burnt up, all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's just how the game go. When you a target, you a rapper, you a target. No, rest in peace to um, PNB Rock. I hate to see brothers go down the neighborhood. I don't want to glorify this shit or, you know, but my first Jacob watch, Fifth told me, beware, you know a nigga blow your head off for that. And that's on my father. My first Jacob coming home. Yeah. And like I said, he put me in position where I wasn't living in the hood. I lived in Battery Park. I seen the Statue of Liberty. I come out my building, little kids was walking barefoot out that, you know how it is over there. Mm -hmm. West Side Highway, Statue of Liberty, nice water and shit, yachts. But when you were a kid, were you a stick-up kid at some point? Nah. Wasn't I, was never, I was never a stick-up kid. I was more of a hustler. Okay. Like, I looked up to niggas that hustled. Like, I came from an era where you see Black Just, you know what I'm saying? I tell niggas, Black Just bought knives to the, uh, to the block. Well, let me ask you a question, because you're talking about that, that, that whole era of Black Just and so forth. Yeah. Um, I think it was 1988. That's when the cop got killed. Edward, Edward Burns. Burns. Edward Burns. Edward story. Burns. That's why they call Queens cop killer Queens. Exactly. Yeah, we all know that. That's all documented. You, yeah. you were living in Queens during that time. Yeah. According to reports, I don't know what you know. Ultimately, you know, they're saying that Pappy Mason ordered the murder. Uh, there was a cop in front of this uh, Guyanese man's house that would call the cops and the drug dealers sometimes. There's a rookie cop, 18 years old, that was basically protecting him against. Yeah, that's where undercover cops came from Queens. Because yeah. after that cop shot, they had undercover police. They had like jump out police and stuff like that. But um, I mean, my question is during that time, from what I understood, that changed everything. Like to the point where George H.W. Uh, Bush had Edward Burns badge and was campaigning with it and would pull out the badge at rallies yeah. and say like, I'm not gonna let this happen. When, yeah. I, when I'm president, I'm gonna make sure the cops don't get killed like this. That's why, they called, that's why they called the cop Killer Queens because I think that was like the first barrel to kill a like undercover cop. You was know he what even I'm saying? undercover or was he playing close? But you gotta understand how it was. Close, Yo, listen, you gotta understand how it was in the eighties, me being a kid, like um, we used to have block parties, crazy, bus trips, crazy. Like when I walked to the store, cars, like I told you, 50 was 17 with a Land Cruiser. Know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You So you had dudes that were 16, 17 with foreigns out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? You had LA from left, left Rack. You know what I'm saying? LA from Left Rack. 50 and them used to fuck with him. Know what I'm saying? Big time nigga. Nigga had, when Biggie said that, drop three and a quarter. I seen niggas come through in that shit, green. Drop three and a quarter. I was like, whoa. But I mean, when that happened, because you were still hustling during that during that era, did, nah, did I was, everything? I was a kid during that era. Oh, right. Okay, now, nah, oh, yeah, you're you right. You gotta remember, during that era, 50 was maybe 12 on a block. I was 10. I wasn't on a block. I was playing with Chuck Norris and all that. Oh, so you weren't even part of, okay, nah. I got it. Like, okay, yeah, I got the timeline a little yeah, bit wrong. Yeah, so okay. like, all that was like way ahead of our time. We the young boys that, you know, came under that. You know what I'm saying? Like on my block, 50 had it really. There was other niggas on the block getting money, but you know, 50 was, you know, doing his thing back then. You know what I'm saying? And um, there was a lot of money back then. We we come from like a 90s era. The 80s era, we just knew about niggas. Like I told you, you'll see Black just bring Nas to the block. I seen that. Yeah, he was from the 80s era. Right. I was on, I like I was a nigga that was in, outside all the time. So like, when they did Hate Me Now, I went to Farmers and seen Nas and Diddy up there. Like, everybody from Queens pulled up. Yo, nigga shooting a video. They stay on top of the store and all that. I was like, there. You gotta remember, man. And shout to Fat Joe, I just seen him in the airport, man. And um, a lot of niggas that we went against, like Wu-Tang and Fat Joe, and I was a fan of, cause my best friend was a DJ. So I was listening to Jealous One's Envy. We got a flow, Joe. We got a flow, Joe. 
And to me, I'm going to keep it real. The Fat Joe beef was more serious than Ja Rule. Yeah, you mentioned that. Nah, I'll say that again. Like Pistol Pete and the Spanish dudes he was with, them, they was they was real deal. Like Fat Joe, his shit, he's a real dude, bro. What did you think like recently when Fat Joe was on stage and said that uh, blacks and Latinos started hip hop and a lot of people got mad at him? What do you mean? I'm lost. There was a pushback saying that, you know, Latinos were not part of the initial hip hop, you know, when it first started, which I disagree with. Well, but, wasn't but, a lot of Latinos like Crazy Legs and them like break, break dancing and stuff like I mean, that? That's a part of the culture. Grandmaster Kaz had a Puerto I Rican mean, dude in his crew. Like, yeah, it was it was a whole thing. But I think that there, there's recently been sort of a pushback by people, you know, like like uh, foundational black Americans who feel that this is, you know, because I, I got the same thing. I remember when I interviewed uh, Enelie Chapa, who's Jamaican, right? And I said, oh, you know, did you know that um, Cool Herc is Jamaican? And when he first started DJing, he took some of the sensibilities of, of you know, Jamaican dance hall. You know I what think I'm saying? everybody's going to have an opinion on hip hop. Right. But what we, I'm saying we is just people all got mad at me look, saying, like, no, hip hop's not has nothing to do with Jamaica. It's just black Americans. And I'm like, but, I couldn't but say a, that because, you know, I, I can't say uh, hip hop. I could just say it was another genre of music. Like, I remember back in the days, like, my man Elijah, his father used to manage Shaba Ranks. So I met Shaba Ranks back in the days when he had a trailer load of girls. Right. We wouldn't say it's hip hop, but it was playing in the music. It was reggae. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm open to all kind of music. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't just, just listen to hip hop. I listen to R&B. You know what I'm saying? I listen to all kind. I might listen to Nina Simone one day. Right. You know what I'm saying? I might listen to Jill Scott. I might, you know what I'm saying? I might go to some old Lauryn Hill. Like, I'm just a music guy. Mm -hmm. I might play the Gap Band. Because I told you, my man was a DJ, so it was like I was a DJ. Back in the days, I used to go to all the parties with Grandmaster Vic. Sometimes Dog Time I might pop out. We used to go to Jamaica Avenue by Ron G, number 10. People don't really know what hip-hop is. Like, for people that know hip-hop, they know what Ron G, number 10 is. Right. This is before Clue. Yeah. When we used to go to Hot Wax, rest in peace to my man DJ Rough Hands, we used to go to Hot Wax, and he'll buy the, the newest record. He'll buy the Wu-Tang um, instrumental. Shout to Wu Tang because I love them guys. I know they they might not like me, but I love them. Guys. <laughs> but we used to go do that, so I know about hip hop. Like you know what I'm saying? Like we know, like we studied this. Like when we wasn't on the block, we went straight to the turntables. My man would go straight to Hot Wax. We'll buy the new Clue. We'll buy the new Dog Time. We'll buy the new Dirty Harry. I've been in parties with Grandmaster Vic. So like parties get shot up. There was no CDJs. There was 20 crates. Right. <laughs> My man had 20 crates. We done been in all, every party. Shout to uh, DJ Goldfingers. Shout to Hardcore Superfly. Shout to the Rockaway Twins. Grandmaster Vic. Tape Master. That shit gets shot up. He got to bring the speakers and all that. Like, that's fucking hip hop. Yeah, I mean, I came, up, jams. Yeah, I came up to the mixtape scene, you know, but that was like after that era you're talking about. But you and I met when I was a mixtape DJ. Right. So, so I, you know, before DJ Clue came, DJ Clue was the first one to like break records. Before that, it was all about the blends. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I did one of my, I mean, my first major mixtape was with Dirty Harry, who you mentioned. Yo, shout yeah, to the, Dirty Harry. Come on. Dirty yeah. Harry was a, is a legend, man. Yeah, the, the biggie rap phenomenon mixtape, which really set my career off as a Definitely. DJ. Without that, I don't know if I'd be here right now. Right. Shout out to my man, Dirty Harry. Why are we not talking about Tycoon Weekend? Well, let's talk about Tycoon Weekend. That was actually my next uh, about, my next topic. Let's talk about Tycoon Weekend. You invited me to Tycoon Weekend. Let me open weekend. the chain up for him real quick. That's all the places I've been, man. You know what I'm saying? That's all the places I've been. Right there. We'll, we'll see open that up. Very creative. OK, let's talk about Tycoon Weekend. Tycoon, Tycoon Weekend. weekend. Shout to 50. You invited me to that. I didn't, ma I I didn't make it. I told you to come out. Yeah, you said to come out. I didn't make it. I had some you. other stuff going on. Shout out on. to the whole Houston, too. And, and before I talk about what happened, uh, I listened to, to 50 on The Breakfast Club before Attack of the Weekend. And apparently, that whole thing is designed as a, as a charity, right? Definitely. Everything went back to um, the G Unity Foundation out there in Houston. Nice. And it goes back to the kids. Nice. So um, we sold out the first show. I think we did 9,000. Which was cool. We sold out the whole stadium and everything goes back to charity. And 50 actually got the key to the city. So shout out to the mayor and everybody 
in Houston. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's all about changing and evolving. And that's what I learned from 50. Like, sometimes you got to hang with the people that you can learn from, not just gangsters and people that want to, you know? And that's how people looked at me. Oh, you just want to hang with the gangsters. Now, I love people. I love the streets. But it's like you got to transition at a time. And that's what I learned from 50. Mm -hmm. Well, some things happen at Taco Weekend. I know I didn't beat up Pleasure P, man. <laughs> okay, so there was a video Pleasure floating P around. Is, listen, Pleasure P is my guy, man. <laughs> the R&B, yo, shout out to the Branton. The Branton is the killer Cognac. Trey songs went wild. Uh, 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 okay, uh, okay, so, so hold on. So, going wild. Okay, but so they, what, what, happened with Ple what happened with Pleasure P? Pleasure P was getting into a random people. I came up there, I tried to calm him down. He wasn't trying to hear it. But ever since this R&B been, R&B is dead shit, these R&B guys been going wild. <laughs> Trey was wilding, that's my guy. Okay, what was Trey Songz doing? Because according to 50 Cent, he is banned <laughs> from Tycoon Week. Trey, uh, <laughs> that's my guy, man. But Trey yeah, I was- I fuck with Trey too, we go Trey back. Was, but Trey is Mr. Little, literally Mr. Steal Your Girl. Like, fuck that motherfucker. Like he was on some, Tough man shit, like, through the whole night. And, you know, I ain't mad at him, but I think it was just the Cognac, the Branson Cognac. It's very strong, man. Shout out to 50, but... Okay, what? So he was trying to run up on people's girls and... He was Mr. Steal Your Girl. Take your girl, like... And then, what, the dude would have an issue with that? And of then course. things would pop off? Of and... course. But from what I... Okay, didn't 50 say that he, like, crashed a Rolls Royce last year I wasn't there for that. See, I wasn't... <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, Shout out to right? Trey. I wasn't there for that. That's my guy. <laughs> Okay. We was having a good time until a cognac came out and, you know, everybody started tripping, man. <laughs> okay, so now he's banned from... He'll be back out. <laughs> Fifth got to blame the Branson cognac, man. He know that, man. Uh, okay, but then at that same event, uh -huh. the, the situation happened where uh, Trey the Truth and his homies ended up jumping zero. Oh, I don't... Yo, listen, I was inside the restaurant. I don't know what happened. And, you know, Trey the Truth, shout out to him. I know him as a peaceful guy. He doesn't usually start nothing, so I hope him and Zero could smash what you know, squash whatever it is, because you know they both two dope art artists. You know yeah. I've been through the ringer, man. You know I done, my mom's crib got shot up, um, had all kinds of beef, so it's like it costs money and it's a lot of stress, not only for you but for your family. So it's like you know it, it's unfortunate that we losing so many rappers now, because you know I went through that, and you know I always think Fifty and you know the Jew unit. All attorneys and everything like that. The that Jew was, unit, that's what yeah. You remember called? the Jew unit back in the days. <laughs> you know Scott Lehman, and you know I know I know Fifth don't Theo Theo Scott my is cool and Paul Rosenberg and certain people, but yo, you're dead ass. It was you a guys team. Really called him that, huh? Yeah, it was the Jew unit. The Jew Shout unit. to Scott Lehman. Okay. Know? Um. Well, recently, Fifty and Lil Kim went back and forth. But what's interesting about this particular situation is I don't think people remember how all this started. Yeah, I, and, I, and you were actually there. I kind of, I kind of stay out of that. You know what I mean? Because it, you know, like Fifty is is just crazy. You know what I mean? You know, Fifty is just a crazy guy. He's gonna say whatever's on his mind. You know what I mean? He's just a crazy guy, and okay. people just gotta realize that. Uh, okay, well, let me let me just put this out there. You don't have to comment on it. Look, if you look, don't want look, to. look, look. No, let me tell you, Fifty okay. is just. He's just crazy. He been like, like when we was on a block back in the days, like mm -hmm. say we on a block and I'm out there and say like, say uh, Kev Brock, God bless the dead, Mutt, um, a nigga named Ken Do. Say, say them niggas out there. Niggas would be like, oh man, here this nigga come. So it's like, I'm used to whatever he do and I'm always gonna ride with him cause that's who I came in the game with. Cause I realized ain't no friends in this business. So it's like, little Kim, yeah, she's a legend. But whatever Fifth say, I mean, it is what it is. I, I you know, I don't want to talk on his behalf for nothing. Well, but I, I will. But talk. all I could say is the nigga's crazy. Right. You so, know what I'm saying? That's so it. Me, look, look. That's all I'm gonna say about okay. that. I don't want to talk about that. Okay. So I can't even put put out there what I was gonna say. Nah, I don't even. Let's go all right, fine, shit. fair enough. I hope the two of them work it out. They're both legends in this game, and, and I actually said. You know, one thing I said on Twitter recently was that Lil Kim was one of these rare female artists. I mean, yo, that, yo, that, that yo, dudes, look, dudes would listen the, to her as well. At the end of the day, look, Lil Kim was fucking with one of the realest gangsters in Brooklyn, right? World, right? Yeah. Was Fifty scared? 
No. Well, there the fuck you go. There That's what go. I'm trying to tell you, the difference between us and these other niggas. I don't come here, I don't glorify nothing. That's what I told Hoffa on the show. I don't glorify nothing. I made my bed, I lay in it. I done been banned from MTV. Yo, yeah, you got hot in the back. Yo, all right, Chris Light, hide in the back. Rest in peace, Chris Lighty. I, I, 50, I, yo, yo, let, yeah, yo, they'll lay your hide in the back. MTV don't want me here. Yeah. They I, got me for slapping a kid. Slapping who? Jimmy Hitchman's son. Oh, yeah. You know, I ain't, I don't even want to go into that. But listen, at the end of the day, I done been banned from everything in the industry. It's cool. Like, people always want to blame us as the bad guys of hip hop. Y'all messed up New York radio. Y'all glorified violence. When violence was in hip hop, you know what I told them on Half a Show? The last positive song, the biggest song in hip hop, don't, cause I know about hip hop. Niggas don't even give Ralph McFucking Daniels his flowers. Like he wasn't BET or MTV before it fucking happened. Facts. And I'm gonna repeat that again. They don't give, nobody gives Ralph McDaniels his flowers. He's the fucking real pillar behind all this shit. Cause when we was little kids, we fucking went to Video Music Box and watched Rakim, Kane, Slick Rick. That's what hip hop is about. Niggas is trying to erase this shit. Let's keep it real. Those, we, we don't have to have no, those are the motherfuckers that started that shit. Where do you, what's it, why you don't interview, interview Ralph McDaniels. I have. Interview him again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have interviewed Ralph Because he's the fucking, though. fucking portal to fucking hip hop, bro. He's the gateway to hip hop. As a kid, we have fucking Nintendo, Karate, and Video Music Box. Mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, Fab Five Freddy also. For sure, Fab now, Five that Freddy. That was the first national- MTV Raps. Yeah, yo, the, but before yo, that raps. was Video Music Box. Correct, correct. When you seen MC Light on the train with the two Jettas, come on bro, I'm a hip hop nigga. Niggas asked me who's my favorite group, Run DMC, motherfucker. Like, come on, like, me and my brother, my, my parents, we, you know, back in the days you get jacked for a boombox, so we had to, me and my brother had to share everything. We had the, the double cassette shit, and we, my, my parents didn't get us no battery, so we on the porch, we play Run DMC, plug it up. Haitian parents, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my Haitians. And we, and we played that shit till the tape pop, Run DMC. Well, uh, recently, Quando Rondo uh, was in LA as well. His car got shot up, his man got killed. We already know what's going on in LA. You know what's going on. It's a no-fly zone. Yeah. Right? Listen, for every rapper, look, around the world, it's a no-fly zone anywhere you go. That's it. It's a no-fly zone. You got to be careful. That's all it come down to. Maybe we got to come back to getting bulletproof trucks, bulletproof vehicles, maybe put up the Bentleys and get bulletproofs now. Mm. And, you know, for me, I learned from 50. Instead of me going in the store, the restaurant, get the food to go, Send your assistant or your man in there, and you cool. Mm -hmm. If you go in there with jewelry on, this place, rest in peace to all these rappers. It's Merry Christmas. Well, after his friend was killed, and remember, there was the whole situation with King Vaughn and everything else like that beforehand. Quando Rondo, Quando Rondo basically made a post where he was throwing down his flag. He said, I'm no longer flag, a Rolling 60s script. It has script. nothing to do with nothing. This is just the streets. The streets have no love for nobody. You just got to understand. You're a civilian. Yes. Do you never glorify to be a street guy? No. A civilian's never going to understand. It's just the streets. That's it. If a nigga see it come up, he's going to come get it. It could be me, you, him, anybody. It don't matter. It's the streets. It's no politics, it's no nothing. It's like, we came up with a nigga that had beef with everybody in the street, everybody in the streets. You think I didn't learn shit in the streets? Shit was getting shot up. Niggas had silences, getting busy. Niggas put hits on your head. Nigga, this, it's the streets. Stay out the streets. That's it, you move around. Yeah, niggas could be tailing your vehicle. Instead of suburban, riding a dirty ass fucking, uh, Chevelle, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> know what I mean? Get a Volvo, get a Hoopty. I don't know. But nigga, shit is real. That's all you can know. I knew that years ago. That's why our first vehicles was bulletproof vehicles. Level four, 50 got three of them. Banks had one, I had one, 50 had one. It's real. It don't, it's no politics, there's no if, it's, no. If you play around out here, you gonna get smoked. One mistake, 
you're going to get smoked. That's it. If you're a rapper, you're a target. I knew that from years ago. I told you when Freaky Todd died. It's, it's the streets. Have you ever known to have actual money on your head? Yes. Do you know the amount? I don't want to say the amount, but I, you know, I don't, cause like it, I don't, like I said, cause niggas always say we glorify the shit. Okay. But I have, I believe I have money on my head in jail. I have money on my head in the street. Do they I don't glorify none of that shit, cause it's real. In jail, did you have any incidents? A couple. Over you being G unit. I mean, I was a high profile nigga. If you a high profile nigga in jail, shit, anything could happen. A little squabble, but it wasn't nothing serious. Like it wasn't nothing where I was getting moved around, like niggas was kicking me out or niggas winning my bucket. Nah, nothing like that is never gonna happen to me. I'm not gonna allow it. Point blank, period. <laughs> Cause when you on an island, nigga, you either gonna turn into what it is or you gonna be a bitch. Well, I interviewed uh, Terrence Gangster Williams, mm -hmm. who's uh, Bird Band's half brother. Yeah. You know about his story? Nah, I don't know. So he basically, was part of a, the original Hot Boys, the actual street crew in, you know, in New Orleans that was basically terrorizing everyone, a lot of right. shootings, a lot of murders, everything right. else like that. He got life plus 20. Yeah. yeah sure. During the course of him doing his life plus 20, he cooperated on his friends who were already dead. Did you see the paperwork? There was some paperwork floating did around. Did you see the paperwork? No, I did not. You can't say that. Okay. That's the rules of the street. Well, he told I, me. Listen, okay. a nigga can't tell me nothing about nobody until you have paperwork. And now niggas are so petty, they make fake paperwork. Because they make right. fake paperwork <laughs> on us in 50. Y'all got ratted. Who we ratted on? Who 50 told on? Get the fuck out of here. That's why I hate fucking Murder, Inc. Till the day we die. I hate them niggas because I never knew them niggas being in the street. Never. I never seen Irv Gotti in a party DJing. Fuck are you talking about? I was outside. 50 was outside. Okay, so so back to, to Terrence uh, Gangster Williams. I don't want to talk about a nigga that you don't have paperwork on. That's why motherfuckers be mad on you, Vlad. You got to come with the factual shit. If you're going to say that, like, yo, his brother got 20 in life, he cooperated, right? You got to have well, no, this. No, 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 no. Look, he, he you got to have this shit up there. Okay, no, but I'm not. He told me in the interview that he cooperated. Who? Terrence Gangster Williams. He told you? Yes. Oh, okay, my bad. You didn't say that. Okay. You said he cooperated. Yeah. I said, where's the paperwork? He told me, he told me in the interview. Because this is what you got to understand about yeah. people that you, that are, we say it's rats, right? Like mm -hmm. even Alpo, I put his name in a song back in days, a couple of niggas years ago, right? Now, I'm just, I shouldn't have did that. Like, because just because a nigga ratted don't mean he not real. A motherfucker still kill you. Right. Right? So, like, I don't play that game. I, you got to see the paperwork. Like, I, you, it's wrong to call somebody a rat without seeing the paperwork. That's right. all I'm saying. But he admitted he cooperated. He, he got, sat down in the chair you were sitting in, in, in a different city, and said that he cooperated. And he explained why. He basically said that his group of friends had killed a bunch of people. It was a bunch of cold cases. So he cooperated on his dead friends. And in return... They was dead already. They was dead already, right. And in return... So did he really cooperate? So did he cooperate on his friends or ghosts? What are you talking about right here, Black? He cooperated on the ghosts, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't cooperate then. I don't know. It's just a strange well, story. Well, so because of, because of him doing that, he ended up actually getting out. He's out now. Birdman... So everybody so-called cooperated on was dead? Yes. Vlad, why are we even talking about this, Vlad? Well, understand. Birdman had a problem with it. Him and Birdman aren't cool anymore. And, and basically, you know, according to him, he said that Birdman's statement to him was, we all sat down at this table, we all made the rules, and you broke those rules. Well, you know, Birdman is a real G, my nigga. Yeah. That nigga ain't no, them niggas are from New N.O. That shit was like the murder capital at a time when them niggas was coming up, hot boys. That shit was real. You gotta remember, we was on Cash Money Tour, 50's first show. Niggas don't even remember. We performed, we was the opening act to Cash Money Rough Riders. That's how far we came. We was opening up for Swiss and fucking um, Young Money. I was seeing Lil Wayne as a little nigga on stage. Like, damn. Were you at the Oakland show where they bro, took that place up? Listen, I, I was bro, we opened up for Cash Money Rough Riders. Yeah. That's why they don't understand Fifth Grind and his hustle, and I respect them. I was there from day one from Columbia doing How to Rob, seeing Swiss and them niggas walking by niggas, seeing, you know what I'm saying? Um, 
Lil Wayne and them niggas. Ill stage set. Lil Wayne been a star his whole fucking life, them niggas. Mm -hmm. So come on, Baby is like, I don't see how a nigga could talk bad about him. You know what I'm saying? Cause he's like a pillar of hip hop. Like he's a fucking, you know what I mean? He's the I fucking agree. man. So, but. Well, from your point of view though, is telling on someone who's already dead, is that snitching or is that not snitching? I can't even know. If you, you talk ghosts, we talking about telling on ghosts. We, I don't know, man. Right, Cause it's that's just... basically what Keefe D did, right? Keefe D, when he cooperated, he said that his nephew, Orlando Anderson, killed Tupac. And, and he, you know, it was all recorded and I've heard the tapes. Right. And he admitted it in our interview. Right. But once again, he's cooperating on someone who's already dead. A lot of people had problems with it. Other people didn't have problems with it. I mean, I guess if they feel if the feds accept that shit, like, yo, you telling on a ghost, fuck it, we going I mean, gonna, he, he got out of a life that. sentence for doing that. I don't that. know. Yeah. You know, the feds do what they want to do, man. So I don't know. Nigga feel like, yo, I'm telling on a ghost. He, I, I don't know. I might be wrong. Right? Mm hmm It's not like the nigga's still alive. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. I really don't know. I'm, like, confused with that. You know what I mean, Flay? Like, nigga telling on a ghost. Maybe a nigga told him in his dream, yo, it's okay. You could do it. <laughs> you, never, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> nigga could have been sleeping, yo. He told me it was okay. I could do it. You never know. That could be some real shit. Like, I'm dead. Go ahead, tell the feds, whatever. And they let him out. He got 20 in life. All them niggas dead. I mean, wouldn't you want your family to get out of doing some jail time if they could tell on you after you died? Bro, listen. Let me tell you You see something. what I'm saying? We go back to civilians and street niggas, right? There's real civilians out there. People that will call the police, if anything. I mean, the streets... It's cool, but the streets don't got no love. So whatever you do, whatever that man do for him and his family is his business. That's how I feel about every man. <laughs> is he wrong? Is he right? That's his business. You know what I mean? He told you the story, so he made it the world business. Right. Right? But at the end of the day, how Birdman feel is his business. He probably knew some of the niggas, of course. You know what I mean? But everybody's going to have an opinion. Everybody's going to feel a way in life, bro. That's just the way life is. Well, the YSL Rico case is still going. Everyone is denied bond. Free, free thugger, free gunner. But that's Georgia, though. Yeah. That's like almost Commonwealth State, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I had a lawyer here. Bro, they got, got a whole different laws out there, bro. Right. I don't, you know, just free gunner, free thugger. It's just, you know, as you being an artist and a rapper, the feds is going to always, they watching everybody. You see, what did we just say? They ran the Trump crib, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody's exempt. <laughs> right. Well, me, I, you, or nobody. I, I interviewed Mo Gangad. He's a lawyer that I have come in and basically break down different cases and so forth. Shout to he, him. He said that if that RICO case was in New York, it would be dismissed. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But in Georgia, with like the Jim Crow laws and so it's forth, it's different out of town. I got locked up in Pennsylvania. We had we was ending for the night. We had a little bit of work. They had us locked up for months in New York. We would have. Wait, you yeah. got locked in Pennsylvania for months? Years ago. For what? Come on, bro. I don't okay. want to get into that. Fair enough. I don't want you to start digging into my paperwork. <laughs> okay. I know you're you like, oh. <laughs> you were locked up for months? Yeah, for some little bit of shit. We just, me and my man, it was just, it was, you know, we was getting money. This was before G-Unit or after G-Unit? I don't try to. I don't want to glorify. No, no, no. no. I, I was just saying. Was this? Was this? I don't want to glorify. Young, okay, people. fine. I'm going. I'm going to get off. You. You know you, you're saying? the one that mentioned it. You the one that mentioned it. But you know, you know what's actually crazy right now in um, in Georgia as well is there's another crew called the Drug Rich, uh, the Drug Rich Gang. Twenty six members got arrested. This is the crew. Yo, bro, this is all we got to say. This right. You just seen Lisa Evans talk about Chelsea's and motherfuckers are shooting up, sniffing. Right here, Chelsea, in Manhattan. What, what happened out here? You could look up Lisa Evans' story. She was talking about how people pay high rent in Manhattan, okay. and their kids are waking up to motherfucking shooting, right. sm smoking meth, and you're paying, you know what I mean, Flav? Hey, you paying 5000 to live here, and you seeing a crackhead outside your shit, or you know, a drug addict shooting up outside your shit. So what you got to understand is this, right? When you have shootings anywhere or killings, what does it do? People don't want to move there, right? Mm -hmm. And what does that do? Lower the value of the place, right? Oh, 10 years ago, ludicrous day, you go to Atlanta, you party, oh, oh. chicks, everything. Oh, it's crazy. Oh. You go to ludicrous weekend, crazy. I remember doing that. 
beautiful women all over the place. No shootouts. Now you go to Atlanta, you like this. Can I stop for gas? <laughs> my man's telling me, shout to my man, Big Mike. You better fill up, motherfucker. You got to fill up the tank now. So imagine going from, oh, oh, parties. We, I remember being at a party with Mayweather, Gucci Man. Shit lit. Oh, Mayweather burning money. Oh, shit crazy years ago. Now, well, this listen, crew, Vlad. Uh, listen, uh, Vlad. Okay. Motherfuckers Go got bigger guns and they're more ruthless. Mm. Just keep that in mind. Okay. They're more heartless. Well, listen, and I don't glorify the shit. I wish it could stop. I pray it do, because it's crazy out here. But it's like, where can you go and chill? Not Atlanta. Not Cali. Not Cali. Not New York. Not New York. You gotta not, go like Ohio. Not somewhere. Philly. Not Chicago. Right. Overseas, passport gang. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I always think 50, because 50 kept us alive. Well, well, Look, no guns. You go to Europe. You go to London. They'll stab you. You got to get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not glorifying that not shit. Not glorifying it. But come on, bro. You seen that um kid? You got a white rapper. He just got shot at 21 times. His engineer got hit like 10 times. The engineer. You ain't see that? Hollywood? White rapper. You can look him up. I forgot his name. Look him up. And, and, and I'm glad he's okay, and I'm glad this guy's okay. I don't glorify none of this shit, because I've been through this shit, and I'm glad I'm still here. You talk about you know? Waco the Kid? There you go. He got shot about six times, and his engineer got shot about 10 times. Imagine being an engineer getting shot 10 times. Your parents are like, what's going on? Well, your man, little TJ, survived. Brother, it's not a game. No. Nah. You know this, Vlad. You talk to him, right? Vlad, you know this. You low key. You how, be low how's, key, right? How's TJ doing? He's all right, man. He's good. He's like, you know? Yeah, all considering. You know, I like TJ. I like A Boogie. Like, I kind of stay out of that. I, You know, and, you know, Robbie Rob kind of made that happen. Like, Robbie Rob, like, was like, yo, you know, TJ. You know, I want to come around, and but you know, I kind of stay out of all the drama, cause it's unnecessary. Cause at the end of the day, the feds are watching. Listen, oh. hip hop police used to follow me home. Yeah, I ain't one. Listen, home. follow Fifty home. I done been to clubs and hip hop police will have four or five cars and they got a car to pull every car pull every every car over. They pull every car over. Back then we had Superman. They y'all don't even know who Superman is. Superman was tall. He looked like Christopher Reed, he'll grab you right out the car. Used to grab us out the car. Grab by the waist. He was a cop. He'll see the weed. He'd be like, I don't care about it. Where's the guns? Back then, I used to chill with a nigga named Beef. Get out the car, Beef. Throw him, throw him around. Beef was little. He throw, Get out the car, Beef. Right from the waist. Niggas wasn't fucking with Superman. Then you had Curly Top. Shut down the club. Curly Top ill on P. Diddy. These are all hip-hop police. You had Curly Top. You had uh, Superman. When them niggas come, psh, you better not have a gun on you. Right. I interviewed uh, Derek Parker. Listen, when Superman, Curly Top, you better not have a gun on you, bro. When them hip hop, they used to follow me home. I live very far. They used to follow me home. <laughs> I wake up to breakfast to the motherfuckers. I live very far. Listen. <laughs> They used to follow motherfuckers home, 50 home, everybody home. Hip hop police. You can't fuck, ain't nothing. Listen, Vlad, this is why I tell you this. And sometimes when you ask them questions, that's why people be like, yo, Vlad, fuck with the police. Don't fuck with them. I know you don't fuck with the police. I'm not going to say nothing to ever incriminate myself ever on this show because I'm right. smart. Right. So what I'm telling you is the feds are watching. Okay. Everybody know that. Well, speaking of the huh? feds watching, I had mentioned the drug rich gang. This is actually the crew that allegedly broke into Mariah Carey's $5 million mansion. That's crazy. Also robbed uh, Marlo Hampton's house. But, okay, house when Atlanta. you rob somebody that's high profile, you don't think it's going to get investigated? Calvin Ridley of the Atlanta listen, Falcons. Listen, L Let me tell you what else, though. Gunna's house was targeted, and when I just interviewed Boosie the other day, and I mentioned this, he said he got a call from the sheriff uh, in Georgia and said that his house was actually being targeted for a, for a robbery as well. Uh it's fucking robbery central over there. And I remember hearing about that because at one point I was going to move to Atlanta. And what, is, and what does that do? It makes the value go what? Down. People don't want a vacation. People don't want to live there. 
the value goes down. And what happens? The feds and the DEA, we got to clean this up. Because, like, I wanted to move Atlanta years ago. But, yo, where can you move now? It's like, it's crazy everywhere. Yeah. You know? What's your whole take about lyrics being used against rappers? 50 said it years ago. You remember Heat? You ever heard Heat? Yep. The DA could play this motherfucking tape in court. I'll kill you. I ain't playing. You hear what I'm saying, motherfucker? I ain't playing. Catch you slipping, I can kill you. Bro, right. the feds been watching since the mafia. Since They took down John Gotti. Who the fuck we think we are? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? And shout to the Gottis, but come on. Yeah, he, and he held it down. You yeah. know, I know you interviewed Sammy the Bull and all them other motherfuckers, but John Gotti, come on. Right. If the feds took him down, he was and the feds, off, he was listen, off juries. That, listen, that's how big he was. Multiple times he paid didn't off Didn't they juries. say back in the days the feds start stand for forever bothering Italians? Because cause, let's keep it real. The mafia, they said they built half of Manhattan in that um, Trump documentary, right? Yeah, I can They see built that. half. Back in the days, niggas on my block used to go work for the Italians. Yo, we going to do construction. Nigga, niggas had bats, guns. It was real back in there. I remember that. And we going to a site. Motherfucker kill you on that site. So come on, bro. Like, when you really think about it, if they took down motherfuckers that's organized, they going to take down niggas that's black that's organized too. The feds is just watching, bro. You can't beat that system. That's all I'm saying. Right. I did a little skid bid, and I learned about the point system with the feds. Mm -hmm. Like, every time you catch up a, a case or whatever, you hire in a point system. And you know what I'm saying? And then they tell it, they say they be like three, four hundred months. They don't say years, they say months. Were you ever around forget. BMF when they were like in full swing in, in Atlanta? I think we went to like maybe one or two parties, but nah, not really like that. Yeah, no, shout they, to they, shout to Southwest T. Yeah. Shout to Meach, Free Meach, and shout to Little Meach BMF coming soon. Well, yeah, they they flew me out and I partied with them. And I just remember looking around with all the Ferraris and Lambos and, and, and the Cristal bottles and the billboards that say the world is BMFs. And I was looking around going like, this is going to end so badly. This is going to end so fucking badly. Because it was, it was obvious what was happening to even a civilian like myself. I was like, yo, I, I mean, you gotta, let you me gotta, party, get the fuck up out of here. Watch, you got you gotta, you gotta, to watch the show, shout to 50, you know? But when that money coming, sometimes that money come like that. There's no stopping it. The money's coming. The motherfuckers was rich. It was like the last niggas to do it. So right, but th but their flashiness was on a level that I've never seen before with an illegal operation ever, 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 ever. But when you got, but when you got fifty million or whatever, hundred million in the basement, you know they coming. You think you think motherfuckers didn't know they was coming? Meach was these niggas was rich. You think you listen? Them niggas was rich. Rich, rich. Half a million, whatever. whatever. You heard the story. It's in the movie. It's come stars. Check it out. Shout out to Lil Meach. But they was the last niggas to do it. But they had so much money. You think them niggas ain't know the Fed? You think Southwest and me? You think they ain't know the Feds was coming, bro? If you got 50 million in your crib, 20 million in your crib, you ain't going to be power. You, right, Flip? Hey, they coming. You got 2 million, them niggas is coming. Bricks, you got the bricks. Two million, they, they coming. Little Meech just got out of his little situation with the Richard Millie watch. I don't know nothing about that, man. Shout out to Little Meech. I well, know, he got out of it. I know he got a lot of jury, so I don't know. You know, sometimes, congrats, congrats sometimes, to him. Sometimes, sometimes jewelers be bugging. Some I don't, you know, and sometimes you know niggas be bugging. But he got a lot of jury. I don't, you know, shout to Little Meech. He, he, he iced up, man. He's looking good. Well, recently I interviewed uh, Teddy Riley. Shout out to Teddy Riley. Legend. Legend. Of course. Legend. Something interesting came out in that interview, mm -hmm. which, which isn't out yet. Yeah. So you know that Teddy Riley did Michael Jackson's Dangerous album. I didn't even know that. He, he produced yeah. the majority of that album. Teddy Riley did a lot. He did know, a lot. He, he goes back to the great. show. He, he did the show for Dougie great, Fresh. Yeah, great producer. Incredible producer. Right. Um, so what happened was after Michael Jackson died, they started working on his, uh, his first album, his, his first uh, posthumous album called right. Michael. So... What happened was they brought all these vocals to Teddy Riley. He started working on it. Apparently, there was this Persian guy that was friends with Michael, and Michael right. was in his basement, recorded a whole bunch of tracks. Those tracks, you know, were approved by Sony. Right. You know, and Teddy was given basically the tracks in order to, uh, the vocals to, you know, produce everything and finish out and put out the album. Right. 50 Cent is on that album. There's a song called Monster with Michael Jackson featuring 50 Cent. 
Oh shit! Shout out to Fifty. I didn't even know yeah. that. You, Did you ever meet yeah. Michael Jackson? Never. I know who kid met him. I was mad. I never met him. <laughs> right. Who kid and this nigga Tony Bruv met him from London. I never met the nigga. Yeah. I, 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 he's a legend. Of yeah, course. I, I'm mad. I never met him. I'm, I see. I've, I've been around. I was on tour with Janet. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't. You know, I ain't you run up. Got on close. Her, you, know? you got you know, close. I was there, right there. <laughs> but shout out to Janet. Okay. I, you know. So mm -hmm. this album comes out. Quincy Jones said those aren't Michael Jackson's vocals. Oh, the album's out already. It's been out. Okay. Quincy Jones said that's not Michael Jackson's vocals. So what do you think? Quincy would know though. Teddy Teddy Riley was like trying to argue with him and nah, you're old, you don't know, you know, whatever. But when I interviewed uh, Teddy Riley and I asked him point blank, I said, are those Michael Jackson uh, lyrics, the vocals real or fake? He said, one song is real, the rest is fake. I talked to Dark Child, Ronnie Jerkins, who, course, who was, never, never who was Michael you. Jackson's producer at the time that he died. Definitely. And yes, did, did his last Talk, actual Yeah, album. I know who Ronnie Jerkins, come on, bro. Right, well, I'm just showing the Michael Columbia, Jackson connection. I, that, I called him up, I said, do you know about these vocals? He goes, yeah, he goes, they're real or fake? He goes, there's fake. He said, they brought them to me before the album came out and I told him flat out, it was like five vocals, and these are all fake. And Hi. they still put it out. What's the story with you and the, uh, the hoagie shop in Queens? Hoagie, what, what hoagie shop? There's a hoagie shop that gets Ja Rule owed, owned, and you would put G unit signs on the hoagie he shop. He did not own the ho. Who told you he owned that? It was that an shit? interview you did. We talked about it. Yeah. It was he didn't. It was their neighborhood. And what happened is we used to drive around and start trouble. So you, you, you remember when you heard me in the rap on Flex and I said, you would catch me and Hollis at the hero shop. Hero shop, yeah. Hollis was like, they had this hero shop where, you know, some hero shops is the shit where everybody go. You might get, you know, chopped cheese and all that shit early back then. You know what I'm saying? They had the best sandwiches. So I used to go to the hero shop all the time. And um, I put my promo picture in there. Okay. Like I said, I never seen Irv Gotti on Jamaica Avenue. I never seen like Ja Rule. Ja Rule was, I went to his hood before, Woodhall. I've been there before, you know what I'm saying? But I never really seen him, you know what I'm saying? Black Child was more the street nigga, but like I said, like they wasn't really outside, like how I was outside, and I don't like to talk about these urban. Them, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, because that shit is old. Like, you know, we flying the country still. We relevant. We running around. We doing shit. We at the Emmys. Shout out to everybody at the Emmys. Had a good time, man. Great time, Neo. You know what I mean? My man Joseph. You know him as Tommy and Power. You know what I mean? Shout out to everybody that's at the Emmys. There was so many actors in there. I actually made the Hollywood Reporter. So I'm, yeah. I'm amped up. Yeah, okay. Tony Yayo said that. Shout out to Uncle Murder. They put him in there. You know what I mean? That's probably the first time a Brooklyn niggas and Hollywood Reporter besides Jay-Z. But um, shout to Murder. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We breathe on Mona Lisa's now and shit like that. Yeah, no, that's I saw, what I'm trying I saw to tell the pictures. You. Um, mm -hmm. One of my members uh, on YouTube, uh, Joaquin N. Okay. He pointed out that you actually have a bunch of songs with Boosie. Yeah. Yo, you know what's crazy? Dudes down south gave me records quicker than like dudes in New York. Like, there's a lot of rappers. I don't want to say their name, but they wouldn't give me the record. But if I call Boosie, records done the next day. Waka, records next day. Um, 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 uh, who else? Gucci. Who? Let me think. Gucci man, record the next done next day. Yo Gotti, records done the next day. That's one thing I always appreciated about my boys from the south. Is like I used to get records faster than them, than trying to get a record from you know. Somebody in New York, you know how New York is. But I had records with Yo Gotti, Boosie, come on, Too Short. Like I get records faster. And these guys are like, you know, and they market, they're crushing it. Cause you think about this, Vlad, but New York artists, how many markets we got? New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, mm -hmm. Philly. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. Maybe upstate a little bit. Yeah, Buffalo. And then what? And then what does the down south artists have? Baltimore, DC, mm -hmm. and, and everything else. Go ahead, keep going. Keep going. Florida, keep going. <laughs> Georgia, Go ahead, Louisiana. Keep going. Keep going. So you uh, gotta remember, G Unit. Yeah, G Unit is a rap group that's seen that transition. Transition. We was getting shows down south. Then it came to a point where you know, their own market started playing their own artists, and you understand that. But now with down south artists. Like a Boosie, Moneybag, yo, or they got they do they could do shows without even going to Europe. But like a New York artist, we got say the markets again, Connecticut, Jersey, 
mm-hmm. New York, Buffalo, Philly. Right. That's about it. And that's if you're ASAP Rocky or Joey Badass, you go overseas, right? And mm-hmm. that's where the real bag's at. Right, because 50 <laughs> was on um he was on Breakfast Club talking about the overseas yeah. touring. And he talked about how but you like, gotta understand for a New York artist like ASAP Rocky is worldwide. Joey Badass is worldwide. Yeah. So the markets cool, those are cool, but they'll be in Europe doing big festivals. A boogie, big festivals. Dudes are overseas. So for a New York artist, you have to transition over there to go to the Londons and all that. Cause that's where the real bag is at. Wrong or right. Yeah. When you really think about it, because what market does a New York artist really have? Cause when we go to Atlanta, I done been in clubs in Atlanta. You're not gonna hear one New York record. Yeah, you're right. You're not gonna hear. No, yeah, you're right. I done been in a strip club. I've been in party. Well, that's why I think Atlanta's really endured. You ain't gonna have one New York record out there. Yeah, no, Atlanta's always been big at supporting their own. Of course, and shot, and that's why you know they they the wave. But you, they got dope artists. You know, you got mm-hmm. Thugger, Gunner, you got Future, you got a lot of dope artists. Yeah, you got Jermaine Dupri. You know, they they back they back it up. So you can't you can't shit on Atlanta. They like been doing anything for years. I love it out there. It's just kind of crazy right now, but. Right. I mean, speaking of Europe, I mean, because because Fifty was was on the Breakfast Club, and he's saying how hip hop is now old enough to treat rap stars like big pop stars, like a, a Prince or a Michael Jackson, where like a lot of these dudes, like Prince, could announce a show the next day and it'll sell out that same day. Right. You know what I'm saying? And now, I mean, you were talking like Fifty promoted these overseas shows himself. He didn't go through like a Live Nation or whatever else, yeah. which, which to me is incredible. Yeah. So so really, I mean, because because it, it kind of like I'm like, oh, okay, he did the Breakfast Club to. You seen New Jack City? Yeah. Remember when Stutter Man told Nino Brown, genius. He's just a genius. He's been like that <laughs> from the block. That's just who he is. So it's like me. I feel like overseas appreciate music a little more than over here. You know, and I love performing over here. I w- we would love to do a East Coast run, but it's it's kind of less he- headaches overseas. You know, you're eating caviar pancakes. You're waking up to the Mandarin Oriental and the Eiffel Tower. And, you know, you're doing 80,000, 30,000, no violence. It's chilling. Everybody's peaceful. You know, and then, you know, you, you're, then you're going to Germany. Then you're going to Israel where Jesus was at. Mm-hmm. It's like... Armenia, the first artist in Armenia. You know how to tell. They, I couldn't believe it. I'm on my balcony. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. <laughs> so, like, they know Uncle Murder. They, it's crazy. So, it's like, I'm big out there. Like, people, yeah, yo, you must come down. Yeah, yo, yeah, yo. You know what <laughs> I mean? In New York, places, yeah, they love us here. Don't, don't get me wrong. They love us. And shout out to all the fans. But it's like, out there, it's just like, come on, bro. You seen when Nicki Minaj was out there? When she was going, mm-hmm. they, it was crazy. It was pandemonium. Well, you guys have been to Russia a bunch of times, right? Yeah, we've been to Russia. And, cool. and from what I understand, you know, because I remember Fredro talked about being in Russia and he would smoke mad weed in Russia. It was normal. So when the whole Britney Griner thing happened, basically. Um, did we smoke in Russia? We had we smoke everywhere we go. So we had to smoke in Russia. Yeah. yeah. Me, like. Me, Light, yeah, definitely. Me and Light definitely had to smoke in Russia before, yeah. Right. So so weed is not, even though it's illegal, it's not really illegal. So the fact that Britney got hemmed up the way she did is really a political move. Wrong place, wrong time, man. She just got fucked. Well, bad deal, you know? How was touring in Russia? Did Russia really... I just remember Russia being mad cold. And I remember we went to go check out, like, Tank somewhere. I don't know if he was... What was that, Flav? The Capitol or some shit? Moscow? It was like, yeah, we was like, it was like tanks and big tanks and shit outside. It just felt like, I don't know. I always looked at Russia as crazy since um Rocky. Remember Drago? <laughs> so when we went there, I, it's just cold. Everybody's tough. You go to these countries, it really be like the movies. Like, you go to Russia, you'll see motherfuckers like tattoo on their back, crazy looking motherfuckers. Where we went there was real cold and the motherfucker had a shirt off. It was freezing. Where was that? Croatia? What was that? With Bill Clinton's on the wall. What was that? Was it? It wasn't Croatia. No, not Croatia. I forgot where we was at. It was like zero degree level. Motherfucker had a ski mask on, no shirt on. Like, you'll see some shit overseas, bro. Well, uh. They good fighters over there. 
Yeah, Russians are crazy. They like to fight. No, like Ireland? Oh my God. The motherfuckers is with it. I've been out there. Yeah. I remember one dude came to one of the security and was like, yo, I want to fight. Old man. <laughs> shit was crazy. Like, <laughs> that pub shit be real. Like, the fight in Irish, that shit is real. The fight, the actual fight in Irish. Yeah, yeah, that That's shit real be real shit. out there. Well, uh, I interviewed Flavor Flav a while back. Shout to Flavor. And I gave him the title as the, great, as the uh, greatest hype man of all time. Definitely. Of course. Public enemy. Would you put yourself but is, in is that he, list? But is he, but is he, but is he, but this is what it comes down to. Is he a hype man and an artist? Yeah. Because Flav had bars. Like, of course. If you didn't have Flav's voice on that, that's just like, you know, it's crazy. Like, like people will put me as a hype man because my show was good, right? And when I perform with Fifth, I love performing with Fifth. It's great money and great perks. Definitely. Caviar pancakes and <laughs> eight star <laughs> hotels. <laughs> you know, when it's me and niggas book me, we might do, we doing something light. You know, but there ain't no caviar uh, pancakes and all that. And <laughs> Lair Jets for my shows. But um, um, I just like enjoying what I'm doing, bro. You don't yeah. understand. Like, where I come from and where everybody else come from in this game, you be dead or in jail. You right. Know? But, I mean, I do consider yourself, you a hype man. And that, and to me, that's a compliment because I don't think so. You know, because you're because you're yourself a hype. Because I feel like I got balls too. But you, like, but but so does Flav. So does Send Dog. So so does a lot of these. No, hype no. Hype I mean, I mean, performance wise, I feel good because to me, it'll be Flav, and then I would say Split Stars number two. Because you got to put Split Star there. Well, yeah. Well, I, then and then I'll be probably number three and number four. Okay. I don't mind being a hype man because you know what? That's my man, and we live in our dream. So. When, when I'm doing them songs with him, it's cool. But I don't want to be in that category because I'm the same nigga that killed Flex. I'm the same nigga that killed LA Leakers. I'm the same nigga that came with Seductive that's still playing 20 years later. Out of all the G-Unit songs, I don't love hoes. I know you don't love me. They're still playing our freestyles. And come on, on Flex, you could ask, you could ask Flex what I did. He like That was on right. my bucket list to do. Right, you but know I what mean, I'm saying. But, but on on the on G Unit songs, you, you hear Tony Yeo yelling in the background and kind of because I like because I like doing that. Even on songs with Eminem, it was an honor to do that. But I feel like I had the balls too. You know what I'm saying? Like when you really listen, like I got the Loyal Project coming, and they gonna hear. I got Banks on there. I got Press on there. I got a couple of other artists on there. I mean, in terms of the, the Graves hype man, and I'm just going to throw them out in no particular order. Okay. Of course, Flavor Flav. Okay. Of course, uh, Spliff Star. Send Dog of Cypress Hill. Yes, Send Dog. Crunchy Black, 3-6 Mafia. Yeah, but you you would put Flav before Spliff Star? No, no, no. no. Th 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 these, are, these are just... Num I'm just throwing them all out there. I'm not, oh, no I'm not, number I'm not no putting order, order on it because I'm not going to upset anybody. Freaky Tie. Oh, of course. Rest in peace, Freaky Todd. He's, you know, Freaky Todd. Freaky Todd, but look, like I said, Freaky Todd, you got to remember, on a lot of Cheek songs, he was doing a hype man, but when you hear the purple tape, was it the purple tape? What tape? What was, I think it was, I know, because I know Raekwon and them had the purple tape. Forgot yeah. what tape. What was, no, it was the red tape, because you know they was from my hood. Exactly. I know J Ball, you know what I'm saying? I know they Pops Champ. Rest in peace to, um, you know, IG. Shout to my meek. I know their whole family. Shout to Little Freaky Todd, which do music. You know, I don't know who's doing it with, but niggas should support his shit. Maybe you should have him come up here. Shout to Little Freaky Todd. Um, that would be a good interview. Um, wait, wait, one of their kids I interviewed. One of the one of the Lost Boys, not Freaky Ty's kid, but uh, Mr. Cheek's son. I don't. I, I never met Cheek's son. I, you know, I was from the one three four side. Cheeks was from the Rockaway side. Uh, damn it. Hold on a second. I, I kind of want to, because I remember this was. Let me see. It had to be Cheek Son, because you never interviewed Freaky Tasha. So. Uh, Lou got cash. Pretty Lou Son. Oh yeah, that's Pretty Lou Son. Shout out to Lou got cash. There we go. Yeah, we Lou go. got cash. That's Pretty Lou Son. Shout yeah. out to Pretty Lou. Um, Spig Nice got out of jail. One of them. Went yeah, Spig Nice. He actually uh, reached out to me. He wants to do an interview. Oh, so that should be dope. Yeah. Bro, shout out to him, man. He did some time. What he did? Fifteen. He, he did a while. Yeah. He did a while. Uh, Flavor Flav, Send Dog, A Split Star, Crunchy Black, Freaky Tie, and Professor X of the X Clan. Of course. And yourself. Of course. That that's the that's the group that I would put as the greatest hype man. And uh, I mean, really, it seems like 
the hype man is pretty much. You know who you have gone. to throw in there too. I remember Acorn had a fucking DJ. I don't know if you remember Flav. Acorn had a DJ. Like this motherfucker was kind of ill. Like he was like a hype man, spit fire. He did all kind of shit. He was just like a wild motherfucker for Acorn. Well, I think like these days the hype man is like DJ drama, DJ Khaled. Like the way they sort of just sort of yell on the songs and kind of hype up the songs. I feel that's like the new era of hype man because I feel like the actual hype man just isn't around anymore in hip hop, which I think is a bit of a loss. You, so it, you feel DJ Khaled is like a hype man, no? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. DJ Khaled. He's screaming and shit. Yeah. I wonder if one day if they, that beef is ever going to be squashed because we cool with Fat Joe. I don't, I don't know. What do you think? Nah. Uh, I, don't, I don't think he's actively man. worried about you every day. Uh, nah, no, nah, I ain't worried about. I'm not worried about him either. Trust me. Um, I remember that this last interview you did. It was a podcast with these two girls. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Um, and they, they brought up the whole versus thing, and you said Fifty Cent's not going to do a versus with anybody. He's not. Why? Why would he do that? And no I mean, disrespect there, to the there's verses. There's artists out there it's that just, are of his caliber. No disrespect to a versus, but why would why would you know what I'm saying? Why would he want to do that? Why like if he's getting Emmys and Walk of Fame shit, right, guys? If I'm getting an Emmy, if you get Emmys, Dr. Dre, Mary J. Blige, fucking Eminem, Kendrick they just Lamar, got Emmys, right? Dr. Dre, Snoop Kendrick Dog. Lamar, they they get Emmys and shit. Everybody on that motherfucker got Emmy. Why would you want to do a versus? And no disrespect to Swiss and Timberland and what they built. Versus is dope. It's it's something dope for hip hop. But certain artists are gonna be a focus on different things. I'm not trying to be braggadocious because people say you brag. You just telling the truth. You know, you get a star of fame. What the fuck? You got a fucking your name on some shit that's gonna be there forever. Well, uh, you were in a few video games, right? Yeah. Uh, Fifty Cent Bulletproof. Yes, and the second Bulletproof I helped create. I was with the creators. Okay, so it was a Bulletproof 2 yeah. as well. Yeah, they both uh, went. I think they both went platinum. How did those games come together? Um, I mean, we just, at the time, 50 was just a creative motherfucker. And, you know, when you hot, I guess people come with a lot of things. And, you know, as kids, we love what? Video games. We love what? Cereal. We love clothes. We love sports. We love everything. So, I mean, it's just all a dream. I came home to all of this. So when I came home, 50 sold 11 million records, Eminem sold 16 million records. We were on Anger Management Tour, the biggest tour ever in my life. I mean, when I mean crowds of people, we sold out Detroit Stadium. I always tell a story when, um, was it Prodigy that fell, Flav? It was Prodigy. We was in the stadium, Lions Stadium, whole thing packed. Now imagine selling out Lions Stadium. And Mob Deep is up there and there's like a little hole in the stage and Prodigy, rest in peace, he fell in there. And it was like, where the fuck is Prodigy? And I think they was doing shit once. You ain't the shit one. The fuck is Prodigy? He disappeared. He fell in the hole. Rest in peace, Prodigy. That's why Rest in up. peace, Prodigy. But it was a big ass stage. It was. But who fills up Lion Stadium? That's why I say, shout to Eminem. But what was it like to, to play yourself in a video game? It was great. I mean, you know, those were good times, man. I had good times. Came out of jail. You know, I'm living in fucking condos. You know, fifths get me Bentleys. I got Benzes, I'm buying Benzes. You know, I'm living my best life. Like, you know, it felt great. And now I'm in video games. We got G on his socks, and cereal, and fucking drawers, and hats, and, you know. Would you consider yourself a gamer? Of course. Okay, so I want you to answer this question. So, uh -huh. so yesterday I had a tweet that actually became the biggest thing I've ever tweeted. Right. 17 million impressions. 12,000 replies. Oh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. Something about playing video games. Right. right. I said, as an adult, playing video games for long periods of time is a form of depression. If you don't believe me, ask yourself this. Think about the 100 greatest moments of your life. Do any of these moments include video games? Probably not. And this comes from a lifetime gamer. What the fuck you talking about, Vlad? <laughs> you fucking up, Vlad. I'm fucking up? You're fucking up. Game, a gamer's going to come looking for you. Oh, yeah. Don't you understand how real video games is? <laughs> Video games save fucking lives, man. You sound like a Dumbo with that one. Video games save lives. Motherfucker not on the block. He not killing nobody. He not robbing nobody because he playing that 2K. Okay. Motherfuckers are playing for money. Bro, I done ran my head in refrigerators over fucking video games. 
That's how serious it gets. You wrapped your head in the refrigerator. Yes. Why? I scored, I scored a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> I kicked the field goal in FIFA. You're talking to a video game fucking guy. Uh, okay. Uh, that doesn't mean they're going through depression. They're saying, Vlad, here go Vlad again, fucking up. You just want to get fucked with. You just want to bother people. You're fucking crazy. Okay. So because you play okay, video on, games, on, you're on, depressed? No way. Listen. You have been around the world. You've had a lot of listen, incredible experiences. Listen, video games are addictive. Yes. I could tell you this. I exactly. played this Spider-Man game, and you know how you get to a part and you can't beat it? Or you just gotta you just gotta come back to it. could be the next day. You like, man, I gotta get it's like a to me it's smart because it's a challenge. Like I gotta figure it out. You gotta really use your brain for video games. Or playing somebody in 2K. I remember there's this one kid in my hood. Eli, he's like the best in 2K. I beat him one time and I felt like good. Like, yo, beat this nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or Madden, when you score that touchdown, you don't, you're just not a video gamer. No, I am a video gamer. That's the whole thing. And so I know. So, what that makes we, you depressed about video games? When I go. Because it makes me feel good. Okay. When I score a touchdown. Yes. Or slam well, on a nigga. Ah! Like, it's well, real. When I, when I play occasionally, I do feel good. But when I turn around and I've been playing for 10 hours, I get very depressed over the time I've lost. 10 hours, games. you old then. But, exactly. you know, it can get like that. You've never played for 10 hours? I see like five hours. Okay. So what I'm saying is when you look at your greatest moments in your life, man, all the traveling you did and stuff like that, your kids, you know, the albums, the songs, would you say that video games are your top 100 moments in your life? Yes. Really? Yes. You're you going to tell why? your grandkids about, the video, a, about a touchdown you made on Madden. Because motherfucker, while motherfuckers was playing outside and that new Nintendo came out, I was playing Duck Hunt. I was playing Contra. I went from that to the, to the new PlayStations and all that. Okay. I just didn't get the new PlayStation now because it was like, I got to find me one. I, I get it when I want to. I ain't had time. PS5. But come on, bro. 2K. My man Strike was just talking about you. I got to play a game of 2K before I uh, go to the club. Come on, bro. It's a part of the culture. You can never shit on video games. I'm talking okay. about when we sold drugs and used to play Super Sprint on the block. That was the only game. Shh. Super Sprint. It's a part of the culture. Video games are part of the culture, Vlad. 50, a big part. Does 50 Cent play video games? Yes. Really? Yes. For long periods of time? I, he's played games before, bro, but he'll play different games. Like, you know what I mean? He'll play Pac-Man and shit like that. That's what I'm saying. He's not really, <laughs> you know, he's not, he'll he's play not, a little, he's not a 2K, that's more banks and, you know, me. But I, I'm just saying, if you have- Fifth will play some Pac-Man and shit like that? What are you talking about? I, I, I understand, man, that you know, playing a game. What's on the tour bus? Xbox, PlayStation. Right. What's in the crib? Xbox, PlayStation. What's at your girl crib? Xbox, PlayStation. What's in the trap? Xbox, PlayStation. What's on every tour? What's in every rap venue? Xbox, PlayStation. What's in everybody's hotel? Xbox, PlayStation. What do kids bring with them now on vacation? To spoil kids. They'll buy one of them shits in the fucking Bahamas. Ship it out. Amazon. I done seen it. It's a part of the culture, Vlad. You're bugging out once again. All right. All, well, we can agree to disagree. Yeah. All, all I You're know is, out, is, is my, my greatest moments. Every moment. My of, greatest moments are not with video games. My greatest moments are. To you. Are, are traveling, family, women, money, food. But what, like, I'm, you know, saying what I'm saying is. Like, what I'm saying is video virtual games. Virtual shit does not go on my top 100 list. It's a part of the culture. You can't okay. say that. What do you accomplish when you're done playing video games? Yo, bro, this people. Made, have you made some money bro, along bro, the way? Bro, bro, people. Have you learned something? What's that kid named Shadow? What's his name? Shadow? Look I, him I, up. I'm not talking about let's look that. At, let's, let's talk about Shadow. Look I'm up Shadow. I'm not Why you don't want to look him up now? Because you're hating. <laughs> I'm not hating. See, you're bugging you're the fuck out, it, If you're doing it for a job, no, I get it. No, Shadow. You know Shadow? No, I don't know who that look is. Look up Shadow. Shadow what? I, I, the video gamer. The video gamer Shadow. People get paid for this shit, Vlad. You're bugging. No, I understand. Now, if you're doing it for money, then I get it. People, if you turn it into a career, you know how many people I get bet it. and win money? They might win money I, I, and I they make on a job. 99% of people are just playing to just escape life. No, they're not. You're wrong. Okay. That's your opinion. That's my opinion. No, 99. There's people in a trap. When niggas are selling drugs, they're playing games. They're waiting for their phone calls. They're waiting to go back to the block. It's cold outside. Right. It's just like gambling, rolling dice. When niggas on the tour bus, they got the PlayStation. When niggas in the hotel, they got the PlayStation. 
Right. You, just... you don't see some motherfucker say, I choose the PlayStation over my girl? This game shit is serious. It's like baseball, basketball, hockey, or sport. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, Vlad. You can't just shit on it. I've seen that. Right. It's like, yo, you bugging. <laughs> Depressed because I play 2K? <laughs> this thing is fucking... They saying you on crack. Vlad is on crack. <laughs> you a crackhead, Vlad. Not my Madden motherfucker. Madden, FIFA, and Bro, listen, I, I know, I know bugging. dudes who go on vacation with their girl and bring their video games. And then you got to think about this. How about, all right, say my son, he like to play games. Right. He, like I said as adult listen, in my tweet. Just, adult kid, just whatever apply, it just is. Apply, adult kid, kids. whatever it is. Okay. Say a person might have friends, might not have friends. But say you're playing with somebody overseas. You're playing, you could play with somebody in Europe now. Mm -hmm. You talking shit. Grand Theft Auto, you ain't just see, um, what's my man from Detroit? Um, you know my man. I'm bugging. T Grizzly. T Grizzly. He got his Grand Theft Auto team. That should be fun. All his niggas be on there. And he make bread off that shit. Right. If you're making look, money, look, look. It no, it's not about argument. that. It's about motherfuckers ain't in the street wilding. They playing at 2K. They playing that game. Let's get motherfuckers off the street. When it was cold and we had nothing to do, we went to the music or we went to the video games. It's a part of the culture. Or we had the music playing in the video games. So how you shitting on the culture? Once again, Vlad, you the bad guy. I said what I said. I stand behind it. Yeah, all right. Well, I, you, I stand behind bugging. it. I don't stand behind it. <laughs> now, you need to smoke some of this. Yeah. <laughs> My strain coming soon. Smoke some of this, man, because you tripping, man. What happened in the Math Hoff interview? Shout out to Hoffa. Shout out to Heineken. Shout out to them. I, I mean, in his aspect, and Hoffa, you know, he's a battle rapper guy. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's why I'm a fan of, of the guy. You know what I mean? And they said that I was being disrespectful, but I, I didn't feel like that. I felt like, in a way, they was being disrespectful. Cause some of the questions that they asked me, and it was cool. And it's like, you know, if the if the interview don't go out, I got Vlad. It's it's all good. You you know, I move on. I don't wake up with grudges or feel no way, cause I know it's the industry. You know what I'm saying? So to me, it's just like, just keep it moving to the next thing. Just work. Right. I talked to him afterwards after you mentioned it to mm -hmm. me, and you know, I spoke to him before having this conversation to make sure it was okay. You know, to yeah. Talk about what but it's mentioned. his. It's it's listen. It's his platform. It's his platform, right? He could do whatever he want to do. Exactly. My whole thing is just I'm just mad. I went a little yeah. bit. You go to Harlem. You know, you give him two hours of your time when I could have been getting ready for the Emmys. Like I do big things, and I don't try to be braggadocious. Cause one guy on the on the show felt like I was bragging, but when you at a point when you happy, you just happy. Everybody's not gonna like me. It's cool. I'm not mad. I felt like one dude on the show kind of didn't like me because he said I was bragging and glorifying. But I I do stuff for the kids. I do stuff for the community, you know. And I you know I came to the middle of the hood, jury on, Maybach because it's not like you know, it was in it's in the middle of the hood, you know. And I was there, you know. And anything could happen. So, you know, that was just my point of it. But if 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 he felt like I got disrespectful on the show, my bad. And, you know, that's his platform. And, you know, I've grown. I'm not going to beef with a nigga over his platform. It's not a big deal, you know. I mean, from what he said, mm -hmm. and he, he spoke respectfully about you as well. But yeah. he said that there are certain times in the interview where you were like, man, I'm done with this. I'm taking off my, you know, to, to take my yeah, mic off. Yeah, but that's entertainment, though. That's, <laughs> you know, half is a real nigga. Look, half is a real nigga. So... I felt like we was in the hood. It felt good. We was in a barbershop. So I felt like it was like a barbershop kind of argument. So hopefully he let the episode come out. But honestly, I love Math Hoffa. I'm a fan of him. I'm a fan of, you know, the Sioux Surfs and the Loaded Lux and the DNAs and all the battle niggas. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like it was just like a, another day in the office for Hoffa. But, you know, I, you know, it's his platform and he's a little calm on there. And you know, maybe he just don't want that on his platform and shout to how fun. Yeah. Shout to his show. And you know. Yeah. I mean, I, I've been on the show, he's been on mine. Right. And uh, we spoke about it. I personally think he should put it out, but it's really up to him. I think he should put it out because yeah. it was raw. We just was, you know, everybody was in their feelings. We was drinking that Branson again. Shout out to 50. I told you that Branson is very strong. I don't know what's in it, but we was drinking a Branson again, and you know. Uh Puffy and Dr. Dre were in the studio recently. Okay. That was sort of a mon monumental sort of moment, I think, in hip hop, because 
Not that the two of them were actually beefing themselves, but like nah, the death row I, I, bad I think, boy thing I was think, so monumental. I think, I think when me and I think when G Unit and Fifty and us was that was the most monumental thing with Dre. Because I think no, that's monumental with him and Diddy, but. Right, no, I mean, us, it's, it's us a different and, kind of monumental. Us, no, us and Dre, no, us and Dre was a different. No, well, you, you were never beefing with Dre, is what I'm it saying. It doesn't matter. Us and Dre, it, it was more monumental because we was New York niggas coming from the West Coast. So this is niggas don't understand. We was New York niggas that left the East Coast. We was New York niggas playing for the Lakers. We went to Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre and them. You know, and Dr. Mm -hmm. Dre is considered the lucky rock. He's like the Lucky Rock. I think they got some shit before. they rub in there. The Lucky know. Rock. Yeah, I heard Jimmy <laughs> Ivey. Dr. Dre, the Lucky Rock. Dr. Dre, the Lucky Rock. So anybody who get to work with him, you lucky. Kendrick. You know, Eric B and Rakim. Buster. Game. That's why I don't understand when Game said, you know, Dre never did nothing from him because Dre is the Lucky Rock. And you got to understand, Game was so lucky because you got to think about it. Dr. Dre's in the studio with a bunch of real L.A. niggas. He blew up a New York nigga. Yo, cuz. Yo, blood. We got to blow up a L.A. nigga now. Game's right there. Game was lucky, man. You know what I'm saying? And I wish motherfuckers get on this, stop getting on this shit beefing because we never got a chance to get money together. Game, Buck, Banks. You know, because it was always a cluster fuck of shit, but it's like, damn, just imagine if none of that G Not campaign shit didn't happen and we could have toured without Fifth. You know what I mean? Remember, I was on Game First album. Right. How I'm song, running. That was like how, one how of my that favorite. Song come records. He hit me up. I had no problems with Game. I actually liked the guy. I thought he was a dope rapper. As soon as I got out of jail, he put me on his first album. I'm running. Dope track. I'm like, what? You know what's crazy? He didn't even have Banks and Buck on there. Yeah, that's true. So I was like, damn. But it's like, you know, game, you just never know what to expect from the guy, you know? Yeah, that was but, a hell of an album. The, the documentary was a hell of an album. Whew. But he said Dr. Dre ain't do nothing for him. You know what I mean? Well, he also said 50 didn't do anything on it. That's him. what I'm I, saying. I know differently you know? in terms of that, but whoever worked on it, however it's just, came together, it's just, it was a classic it's album. The whole, at the only day, I don't like to get on this internet and glorify, because like I said, with Henchman, Niggas done, shit done got real. You know what I'm saying? So I know when shit get real, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like to glorify that. And that's what one, that's what I was explaining in the half of them in the show. I don't glorify that. It's just things that happen in life. You understand what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, I don't like to get on the internet and play around too much. You know what I'm saying? Because shit get real. Rapper, street nigga, blogger, whoever you are, shit get real, Vlad. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? But it's just unfortunate that me, Game, Buck, and Banks couldn't get money together. That's why you just gotta look at it. It's unfortunate, you know, and it is what it is. And I'm always gonna say shout out to Eminem for wearing the free Yayo shirt when I was on Rikers. Shout out to Dr. Dre for allowing me to be in the studio with him. Shout out to 50 for allowing me to be around him and, and be for that moment. When we was rolling up the Guido and the Hennessy and they was playing um, If I Can't Do It and they was playing in the club, I was there. Well, there was a there's a rumor that was floating around that uh, in the club was originally meant for D12, but they turned it down. The beat. I mean, you never know what beat. I mean, Fat Joe was supposed to have Candy Shop. Oh yeah, right. So you so you gotta understand. Sometimes a motherfucker might play some heat, right? Flav Hedrick, and it might not just it might not just be your time. Like heat, if it's beef cocking and dump it, they said uh, bust the ram to that and rock in. Yeah, well, you know something. I actually. I heard that same rumor, and I remember when I was working on the, the Tupac Rap Phenomenon 2 mixtape, I mm -hmm. went to Rakim's house in Connecticut, and we had a conversation about that. He said that uh, he actually never got that the, the heat beat. Yeah. He said that that wouldn't even be the type of beat he would want with all the gun clacking and all yeah, that yeah, type yeah, of yeah. shit. I don't know. I heard the same thing. Maybe, thing, maybe yeah. it was made for Rakim. You know, I mean, yeah. yo, Dre is so fire. You go on his shit computer now, You it's, it's probably 10 million hits in there. You know what I mean? Remember he had, but you know, out of all the artists he had, you know, yeah. he had Truth Hurts, he had Rakim, he had Buster, he had Brooklyn, he had Joe Beast from Philly. Yep, I remember. He had Game, and then he had 50. So the way I looked at the label was like, yo, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's survival of the fittest. 
That's what, how it is with Dre. Huh? What is it about Dre in the studio that's just different than any other producer? He's a fucking genius. Eminem is a genius. And what I mean a genius is, I never heard somebody like tell 50 to do the same line 50 times, 30 times. I nah, don't this, say yeah. it like this. Say it like this. Yeah. 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 Like, nah, do that. Yeah. He be like, you say it like this. And the nigga 50 saying that one line a million times. And that's when I learned that sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Like when you listen to Snoop, real deal holy feel. All these hookers and hoes know how I feel. Cause them niggas are like geniuses. They know how to say shit. And it's like, damn, that shit stay in your mind for the rest of your life. That shit up there in your medulla. Like what the fuck they done got in your psyche. And that's what Dre is an expert on. Eminem, I told you his expertise. He could rhyme in pit lag, rhyme backwards. He could fucking tell you the footsteps and many men came from poltergeist. Fucking aliens. Mm -hmm. These guys are not even human in the studio. Well, one thing that 50 said on The Breakfast Club, he said, uh, the culture loves things that have been damaged by experience. Right. And you see how harsh the experience is and how beautiful the art is. Right. You agree with that? Of course. Yeah. Do you think that it's almost like a, a must have where people feel that they need to come in with a bunch of trauma and they need to somehow be real and, and I think, have to. I think, I think when you're going through something, you come with better music. Like mm. music, it could, it, it could like, I don't know, it's, it's an emotion thing. See, some people just do music for the music. They don't do it for the money. They don't do it for anything, the clout. People just like to do music. And one thing about us is like, when you when you put pressure on yourself to do music, I feel like that's when it stop having fun. When we was on the block, and I'm saying, my phone rings so much, I'm running around with the charger. It's T O N Y Y A Y O. Light on the Tahoe. It's just having fun. So you gotta kind of keep it to the fun. When it turn, and then it turned into business fast. You know what I mean? I came home, niggas had rings and chains, and niggas was in condos, and now it's a business now. What's gonna be the first single? Where we going with? It's more of a business, but, mm hmm Well, uh, is Scarface your favorite movie of all time? I would say so. Yeah, How many times I you mean, I it? can't say it's my favorite. I got, I'm a guy that, you know, like, I like old school, I like new school. Like, mm -hmm. I I watch Goodfellas a million times, Scarface, New Jack City, Boys in the Hood. I like what everybody else like, Juice. I just, I like, a lot of gangster movies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, Scarface was kind of special though. I feel like out of that whole genre, Scarface sort of connected with people a little bit differently. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how weird I am. You know that um Juice movie? You know Juice? With Tupac? Yeah, Juice with Tupac in him. Remember when they was watching TV? Made it, Ma! Yeah. Made it, Ma! I actually found out what that movie was and watched that movie. I, I thought that's... Not a real movie. Yes, it is. It's a real movie? Yes, it is. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, in Home it's... Alone, that wasn't a real movie. Okay, that's what it was. No, not in Home Alone. The one that's in Juice. No, no, the one's in Juice. no, no, I'm talking about, you know the gangster scene in Home Alone, that the TV that they keep watching? I think that, that was a real movie. But yeah, in Juice, that was a real movie. Yeah. That's a real movie. Yeah, I went back, movie. you know, you could, you know, you go back. I done watch Bad Boys with Sean Penn. Remember that back in the days? When he had the cans? Like, I watched movies from the 70s. I watched old... Like, I had to tell somebody, remember um, Richard Pryor was in Superman 3? A lot of people don't know yeah, that. Yeah, right. A lot of people didn't know that. It was like, what? That's when he really crossed over. Yeah. But like, I was a Superman 1, Superman 2, right. Superman 3. I'm still watching that. I'm watching old Richard Pryor movie, Toy. Because I feel like- That shit was horrible. I you fucking The toy? Know. You fucking You thought know. that was a great film? You shut the fuck up. You, you Yo, for idiot, real, bro. you thought the toy. You don't know nothing, Vlad. A white kid with a black man as his it personal does, it pet. It didn't matter. It, it's, it's Richard Pryor was a funny motherfucker. And, he, he, and you, you didn't see the lesson. He taught that kid how to be more responsible and more smart. Yeah. He, it was somebody from the hood with a rich white kid. He got paid. That movie would not run today. There was no way they could make I'm that movie. I'm still watching Toy. <laughs> you know, fuck, any There's movie, no listen, way in 2022 any, they listen, would make a movie like any that. Any movie, I'm an 80s, going, going into the 80s, 78, I was born, going to the 80s, to 90s, baby. So G.I. Joe, he met Richard Pryor, Eddie, Eddie Murphy, anything that has to do with the 80s, I fuck with. Nah, I feel you. I'm a Richard Pryor fan. That Toy movie, though, is a nah, fucking I'm, I'm classic. I'm not fucking with it. 
uh, agree to disagree on. Just like Uncle Buck is a classic. Uncle Buck was cool. You don't want to do We can get on here. We can talk about movies and create our own show. Because when it comes to music or hip hop, I'll fuck a nigga head up. Okay. Bad. All right. Pause. But I, listen, I, I got a few. I got a few. You know, I'm, I'm good with my shit. But too. you saying toy is not a classic? No. It's saying no. Uncle Buck is not a classic. Brewster's Millions was a classic, but the toy was not what a classic. What the fuck is he? What is Brewster's Millions? What is he talking about? Come on, man. You don't know what you talking about. You oh, know with the three white guys. No, with the he was given he was given thirty million dollars. He had to like oh Brewster yeah, million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spend in I remember days. that was cool, but that toy was, was a classic too. You're Yo, bugging. Toy's a classic. I think so. Bruce you think so? Bruce, Bruce, Bruce and Millions was a classic ah. too. Toy was a classic. He was in a mansion. They was playing around. Yeah. The little kid loved Richard Pryor at the end. He, matter of fact, it was a lesson. It was like showing you, yo, the, the father had all the money. He had all that shit. Richard Pryor didn't have no money. The kid was lonely. So you could have all this money, but your kid won't be happy. He want to spend time. Richard Pryor spent time. It was a meaning in the movie, right? You're just seeing white man, black man. No, because I don't see color. A rich white kid I got see, a black man. It doesn't. You, you still not. Man. See what I'm saying? He's still not getting what I'm saying. I understand. You see Thung Jio Way and that's it. You're yeah. seeing color. I'm telling you it's a good movie. Because it was a rich white guy that didn't have time. And this shit goes on now. You don't have time for your kids when it's not really about the money. It's about the time. And he wanted to, and, and the rich kid wanted to do what? Live a regular lifestyle. Right? Go to school regular. And he got with Richard Pryor, and Richard Pryor taught him, no, you can't do this and do that, because he was spoiled and did whatever he wanted. And the father was never around. Exactly. You don't see the I'm, point I'm, in the movie. I'm not co-signing this. I, I feel you. I respect your opinion. I respect your opinion. We just have to agree to disagree on this particular Toy one. is a classic, There's no bro. possible way that, that movie would ever get made. Uncle Buck is a classic? I liked Uncle Buck. I wouldn't say it was a classic. I liked You're it. fucking bugging, Uncle Buck. <laughs> <laughs> when he told that lady, you, what is that, a rat on your nose? You don't know nothing about movies, bro. You don't smoke or nothing. You don't, you don't know. What is that, a mole on your nose? You're bugging, bro. You don't know classic. Okay. Uh, Gucci Mane recently uh, did a song uh, about not dissing the dead. He said, I know my tongue is a sword. I know I should be more careful with the shit that I said. I feel like I started a trend that never gonna stop. They gonna keep dissing the dead. None of this shit, no pretend. That shit is for real. Uh, N-word gets shot in the head. Young N-word's wigging on pills and going on drills. We need to stop dissing the dead. Right. Remember Gucci had that, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. dig your partner out. Classic. Right. Yeah, from the verses. Yeah. Right, which he actually performed in front of Jeezy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and said he's smoking on a, on a pookie pack. Yeah, yeah. So he's now putting this out there. And although he didn't invent this kind of thing, he definitely popularized it in Atlanta and so forth. You guys never did that. You guys dissed actual living people, but you never dissed their dead relatives or nah. dead friends, or nah. you never went that far. Nah. None of y'all. Nah, nobody would go that far. But yeah. I mean, you But know. now that's considered normal. Where did it come from? I think Chicago probably originated it. But there you go. The Chicago, Jacksonville I mean, decided to run with it. I mean, I mean, it's just certain things turn into trends, man. You know, motherfuckers are crazy now. Like we all argue what era was crazy, this era, that era. It's just crazy every other year, man. It just, you know, and it is what it is. If a motherfucker's an op, he don't care. If a nigga shoot at you with your kids, you don't see that in the Bronx and all that, right? A motherfucker walking down the street, little kids there, he's still shooting, or people are barbecuing in the park. And mother, a little kid get hit. Why would a motherfucker care about dissing somebody dead when they don't give a fuck about somebody that's alive, nigga? Little kids are getting hit out here. And like I said, I don't glorify none of this shit. I wish it don't happen. Because back in the days, motherfuckers used to hit their target. Motherfuckers wasn't just shooting up the park and then you had the guns niggas got now. So I'm not glorifying. I never want to glorify that shit. But a lot of these little niggas don't care. And it is what it is. Maybe they could do better. Maybe if we put them in position, they could do better. Maybe we could do shit for them, you know? Have you ever had anyone do that to you? Like this one of your homies or your dead homies or anything else like that? I mean, I mean, if a nigga lost his- if songs. If, 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 you songs. Hit, if a nigga lost his friend, right? Which is his friend where he consider his family. Yeah. And niggas is dissing that nigga in a song. Niggas are either going to spin on you or niggas are going to diss you in music. It's just how the game go. It's just a trend now. That's what niggas do. 
So have weird. you ever had anyone do that to you? What? Did somebody dead in the song? Nah. Never. No. It was just more of a lyric thing. Bitch ass nigga or this or that. You know, it was, you know, hip hop's always been competition. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when you look at when you guys were, were in your full swing, there was no social media, really at all. No. MySpace came later. Yeah. And then even MySpace wasn't like social I media. I wish there like was going. social media back then. <laughs> if it was social but, media during your era, what do you think would have happened? We was the biggest niggas back then. We would have been even bigger because we had social media. So <laughs> it would have been even more fronting, but was no social media. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What about now that when you have to see social media? Like, for example, there was like the, the 50 worst rapper list that started to circulate. You're on that list, right. number 42. I actually argued. I remember, you know, when, when I talked about some other interviews, I'm like, Tony Ayo don't need to be on this list. It's right. ridiculous. But when you see shit like that, does it irk you or is it whatever? No, nah, I mean, yo, when when you when you are artist, fifty two minutes years old, you public property. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's your job to break me. I've been dissed by mad niggas, like, yo, fifty words MCs, but I got platinum and gold albums. I got houses. I'm on my fifth passport. I've been places where these local rappers, like a lot of your favorite rappers, ain't even been to Dubai yet. I was doing that on my own. So it's like for these blogs, and that might be a personal person that just don't like me. I might have slapped an intern or slapped somebody or violated somebody or took somebody's parking spot or threw a milkshake at a nigga. I don't know for me to be on that list, but that's some hater shit. Just like you put Gucci, and it could be a nerd nigga in his basement writing that. For that nigga, like for real, he he could eat a Frank stand for me because I don't see how I'm on that list. (laughs) Whoever wrote that, eat a Frank stand, nigga. You win your whole fucking website or whatever you got. Because right. a nigga like me don't give a fuck. Everybody's going to have an opinion. Right. I'm I mean, public property. NBA Young Boy's on that list, just so you know. You so. know they can eat a Frank stand if NBA <laughs> Young Thank you for putting me on there. If you put NBA Young Boy on there, you know you can eat a Frank stand. Pause. But, like, come on. you just That's just somebody that don't know hip-hop. When you you see- got NBA Young Boy and Gucci on there? Come on, bro. When you see a, a dude like, like Young Boy... Who who is really at the very top of his game right now? Right. You know his streams are up there with Drake's, without any radio singles. So like, how like can the, he be on that list? Right. Back to the idiot that wrote that right, list. They, exactly. You just fucking retarded. Go exactly. I, Not retarded. You just stupid. Go I agree. Ahead. When you look at you coming from a similar place of a young boy, you know what I'm saying like mm-hmm. now you're in New York. You know he's he's uh, New right. Orleans. I mean uh, Baton Rouge, whatever. But. Similar types of, of, of backgrounds growing up and, and so forth. When you see how he is at the level that he's at, uh, but always getting into trouble. You know, he just beat his federal gun charge. I think he's got another charge here. And there's always kind of issues. You know, I think he's on his 10th baby mother at this point, And he's like 21. Mm-hmm. When you see someone wilding out like that, but with a massive amount of success. He got the money? He got the money. He's the boss? He's the boss. He can do whatever the fuck he want to do, brother. Fuck how many, he got 20 kids. He got the money, right? Yeah. He can afford it, right? Yeah. He's the king. He's up there with Drake, right? Yeah. He's the boss, right? He do what the fuck he want to do. Who are we to judge? He ain't going to listen to what me and you got to say. Right. He got more money than me and you, right? Way more. So what the fuck were he going to listen to us for? <laughs> and if somebody had money, what the fuck he going to listen to them for? The game has changed. Motherfuckers are making money off of YouTube. This guy is the fucking king. But as well yeah. as... The Dirks and the babies and the little babies. These guys, it's just the changing of the guards. Rest in peace, XX. These guys were like the new Tupacs, the new fucking 50s, the new Eminems, Kendrick Lamar. Like, you know, the younger generation is crazy. It's a lot of artists. Yeah. But, I mean, for him, like, he's one of the biggest artists in the game. Right. Mm-hmm. But we're now older. Mm-hmm. Right? We're in our 40s now. Okay. We, we've made the mistakes and... A lot of times, we, what mistakes we made? We still alive, right? We still alive. So what mistakes we, we made? We fucked off a lot of money. Who, are we dead? <laughs> no. Then what mistakes we made? You don't think you made any mistakes along the way? No. Nah. No? Nah? None? You got to, any day you wake up and, and and you ain't six feet deep, it's a good day. You're winning. You winning, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. You could be broke, rich, whatever. You winning. Yeah. And you pray to God. You, you pray to God every night. Yo, pray to God I wake up in the morning. Mm-hmm. You got money. Fair I enough. believe in God. I believe in Jesus. I, I hope it doesn't 
offend anybody. You're, uh, <laughs> you're Haitian, right? Yeah. How did your Haitian parents, generally from what I understand, Haitian parents are super strict. Yes, very strict. Very, very strict. strict. Yes. How did your Haitian parents deal with all the fuck shit that you were doing as a kid? Um, as a kid, my father used to chase me off the block. You know, he knew what everybody <laughs> was doing. He knew they were selling drugs because he used to play his lottery up there. So he used to come up there and chase me off the block. But I understood what he was saying because it was nothing but wrong up there. Your parents try to tell you to do the right thing. But as a kid, we don't want to listen. So it, it's just the way of life. You know, your parents tell you don't go there. You want to go there more. And my moms didn't play. I was shut down like 8, 9 o'clock. Nobody over. Mm. But that stopped. My crib never got raided out of all my friends. Really? Yeah, the strictness. Huh. Your friends were getting their, their houses yeah, raided? Yeah. Wow. But not me. My moms were strict. No crackhead could knock on my door, nothing like that. Like, she'll throw my work in the garbage. She was like a greyhound. My mom was just like, Haitian parents don't play. They'll go do She threw shit. your work in the garbage? Yes. <laughs> and you couldn't do a damn thing about it? Yes. <laughs> about, a, about 100 grams she threw in the garbage. Wow. Yeah. She how much was that worth? Vesses. Like, back then, how much was that worth? It's a good amount, a couple of racks. You know what I mean? It's definitely 100 grams is a come up. You good. I definitely asked her where it was. She helped me find it. I told her it wasn't mine, but it was mine. I was, you know, I was on the up up at that time. Okay. But um, these are stories I remember, but having strict parents. Father? What? Yeah, my father didn't play. He beat my ass my whole life. But when he got older, I, he lived in my mansion with me. I took care of him. Really? Yeah, until he passed away. He moved. Then he moved with my brother and he passed away. God bless him. Miss you, Dad. But, you know, he beat my ass my whole life. But I understand why. Did you hit your kids? Nah, not really. Not really? Nah. A little, little something here and there? Nah. Yeah. I don't really hit my kids. Time changed, man. Back then, it was it was perfectly yeah. acceptable. You hit to... your kids now? Nine, one, one. You never know what's going <laughs> to happen. You know what I'm saying? Kids are different They're now. locked up. Yeah. You get a... Child protective yeah. services come in. Yeah. 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 Like your kid got a scar, whelp on their body. Daddy did this. Oh, you asked out. You fucked up. But back in the days, you know, my teacher, I remember, look, in my day, and I'll never forget this, and, I, my, and this is... A kid, we had teachers could hit us. Yeah. So we had a teacher, uh, Miss McGrath. She'll have the gold ruler. She wasn't like, like, but you know, she'll slap you on the hand, heavy gold ruler. She pull that shit out, little lady. Swear to God, she about this big. Still have nightmares about her with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you remember that shit, because it was respect. Like a teacher, your next door neighbor, I come from an era, my neighbor could, Miss Peoples, God bless the dead. She could slap the shit out of the back of my head. What I'm gonna do? I can't disrespect her, but it was respect back then. Haitian beating, get on your knees. Look at the world. That was a Haitian beating back in the days. All my zoes know. Get on your knees, first of all. My father was a nightmare. Hmm. You know, I had to face that shit. Remember my brother stole a bike back in the days? Mios, Miles, bro. They, they tore that nigga up, bro. Is Kodak Black the biggest Haitian American yeah, rapper of all yeah. time? Uh, Kodak Black? You want to say Wyclef? Ah, Wyclef, yeah, you're right. Fuji's nigga? Like, okay, yeah, I forgot about them. Mine is Proswell. I don't fuck with Proswell. What's wrong with Proswell? I know Proswell. I just, I just don't fuck with them like that. I fuck with Clef and Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, I don't know. Clef, I know. Clef is cool as hell. I've been nah, a few those times. are to me. Proswell was cool, but I just I like Lauren Hill and um, Clef better. Clef. Yeah. Okay. But, mm -hmm. you know, Kodak Black is the new biggest Haitian. Of course. Yeah. Hell point. yeah. I Definitely. mean, he got pardoned by Trump. Come on, bro. That's big. You get pardoned <laughs> by Trump. You come on, bro. That's fucking big. That's in the history books. Yeah. What did you think about the, mm. the first AI rapper that got signed by Capitol Records and then dropped like a week later? I don't know. That shit was kind of weird, bro. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe it would have been going. I don't know. But I guess it was a weird looking guy. I don't know. They had him with green hair. What, what was it about? I mean, it was an AI rapper. He was the biggest like AI rapper on TikTok. He gets signed. And then they sort of find this weird stuff about him that's sort of somewhat racist to the point where there was this one thing where it's like there's a picture where it's like, you know, the police are beating my ass. They want me to snitch, but I, you know, but I ain't no snitch. And it's like, he's like basically making fun of police brutality in a way. So ultimately a week later, Capitol Records said that we were dropping him. We we're sorry for offended, offending the black community. And he's Well, gone. right now we in uh, times where, you know, everything is sensitive, mm -hmm. you know, but like, you know, 
in the eighties and nineties, shit wasn't really sensitive. You could say certain things and you know, it's even rough on comedians. Like you can't really you gotta be sensitive, T V, podcast, you know, whatever you do, you kinda gotta be more sensitive to what you're saying and it's understanding, you know, and we in different times. So they might have made they dropped the ball, made a mistake, tried to make him gangster, getting police beat by the police is not snitching. And um they dropped the ball. You know, maybe they should have spoke to somebody that's, you know, maybe they didn't wasn't somebody dropped the ball, put it like that. Because it's a great idea. Something new, you know yeah. what I mean? It's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, would you sign a an AI rapper? Why not? It, it depends on how good he is. Why not? Have you ever signed rappers? Like Yeah, I had a couple of remember I had Danny Brown and then you know Wait, you had Danny Brown? Yeah. You signed Danny, Danny Brown. Danny Brown was supposed to sign with me. And supposed then, to sign with you or actually signed. And with then you. he got he was supposed to sign with me. I was getting the paperwork and everything done. But you know how it is when people get hot. That's yeah. why 50 always taught me get your business done right. And no disrespect to Danny, but I had him living in my house. I brought him on tour. But once he got hot and Eminem and everybody else seen him on the radar, you know, he didn't know me no more. It's cool. It's a part of the business. It's a learning experience. Mm. He signed with, uh, was it Fool's Gold? I think, yeah, he had a, he had a deal with Fool's Gold. But yeah. he, he had TV shows, He you know. Eminem and, and Paulie and everybody recognized him. And look, he was in Detroit and nobody knew him. And I found him. Yeah, I mean, he's nice. He's nice. I remember uh, someone- we had, a, uh, we had one project, Hawaiian Snow. I think it was Hawaiian Snow. And that's what kind of like took him off. He got bars. No, he's nice. He's. Not, I remember we, the reason why I never interviewed with us was because uh, we had posted a video of someone throwing a lemon the story, at him. The story, the story, the <laughs> story. Someone threw a lemon at him on stage. We posted a video and he was like, fuck you too, Vlad. No, 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 no. I know. I know. I know him. He takes stuff personal, but yeah, he's a good guy. Exactly. But he's a smart dude. Like he's one of them dudes that what one thing I give Danny Brown was he one of them dudes that he sat in, in the studio. He sit in front of the computer and be like, I'm not going nowhere. He'll pop an Adderall. That's it. He'll be in front of that shit all day. Like. I ain't going nowhere. He dope. He's a dope rapper. But, you know, I showed him love. And when he blew, it was just like, please, hey, yo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? It could have been, you know, one time 50 told a nigga, you know, it was funny. It was a transition. And that's a funny time because it went from baggy jeans to skinny transition. Mm -hmm. So Danny Brown was the first nigga I seen with skinny jeans. Like, like, I used to take that nigga shopping, the nigga buy damn near woman. He's like buying woman's jeans. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I mean? Like, niggas buying woman jeans and shit. One time we was on tour, his shit was mad tight. So Fifi was like, yo, tell your man he gotta change his pants, man. <laughs> but it was crazy how it went from baggy to tight. Yeah, so I mean, he was I mean, kind of ahead of time, you know? Yeah, what I, mean? I mean, Lil Wayne was doing that early too. Remember, he had like the. Yeah, but you that know, was like the, they the, was the doing leopard that. leggings and you know he'd wear on stage. They was doing that in Europe, man. Yeah, it was some white boy shit. Yeah, I mean, listen, Europeans always had the tight clothes. Right. It was cool. It's just back then your shit was baggy. Then now we looking at baggy shit, like what the fuck I had on, right? Because it looked too crazy. Because now it's like the European look. Yeah, but now it's going back to baggy again. Luckily. Yeah, here and there. Yeah, here certain there. brands, Balenciaga and certain yeah. shit. Yeah. Louis Vuitton and their shit's baggy yeah, now. They got oversized shit. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember I found one song with 50 Cent and R. Kelly. Have you guys ever worked with R. Kelly? I never. Oh, did he? Oh, yeah. Did he have something? There's a that? song. Hold on. I actually looked it up. It's a song called Could Have Been You featuring R. Kelly. Did that ever come out? I think Dr. Dre's on it too. I don't think it ever came out. I think it's I one of these nah, kind of never, leaks or whatever. I don't think that. He never worked with R. Kelly. Nah. I mean, what do you think of R. Kelly getting 30 years? Nobody's is in. What do you think about the feds running in Trump house? Shout to Trump too, but you know what I mean? <laughs> but what do you, nobody's exempt. Harvey Harvey Weinstein was on the island, right? He was on Rikers, right? Yeah. He, he, he's been in Hollywood from Rikers, right? Mm hmm Who's exempt? R. Kelly locked up, right? Mm hmm Yeah, 30 years. And he's got a new trial going on if right you now. Are, if you're an artist or, <clears throat> or you're a blogger or whatever you do, try not to be the next jail talent. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the next jail That's it, talent. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's any nigga nightmare is to be the next jail talent. You know what I mean? And and for me, like nobody wants to anybody in jail or prison don't want to be in there. So what I could say to you is like it's it's sad. But yo, nobody's exempt. 
Yeah, I mean, there's actually a journalist that was supposed to testify in his trial, and uh, his house got shot up, so he refused to testify. Who? The journalist. Against who? Against R. Kelly. Listen, I don't know nothing about that, but Me I neither. can tell you this. Nobody's exempt. Me, you, the feds will come for anybody. Right. You know, there's a... Hip-hop has always had this thing about not snitching and so forth. Now, the Takashi thing happened. It is what it is. But Charleston White, who I've interviewed before a couple of times, I feel like he's the, the first person in the hip-hop space that really embraces snitching and calling the police on people. Anyone he argues with, he'll actually call the police yeah, on. Yeah, that nigga don't play with that shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. And he'll pepper spray you like he did to, to Sullivan. Right, Boy right. When, when that happened. What is your take on Charleston White? I just think he's a crazy motherfucker. He, I mean, you know, if that's what he, if that's, if he say he going to tell, that's what he want to do. If he, he must be, I guess, like a civilian. Yeah. So he's like, if he don't like gang shit, then I understand that's what he don't like. And if he say a motherfucker do something to me, I'm calling the police. That's on him. I'm not going to say, I got friends that are civilians that will call the cops. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I can't judge anybody for saying he called a cop. I know what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I know what certain people are going to do. You know, but if he's saying he's going to call the cops, I don't, you know, have a problem with him or feel no way about him. You know? You know? But he sound like he's sometimes a, a kind of real nigga too, though. Cause well, then he uh, like pepper spray somebody. Who he, well, he, he pepper spray Soldier Boy. Yeah, like so. I guess he's just an all out well, type of motherfucker. I don't he, know. He was uh, when he was a kid. He was involved in a murder. Oh, okay. I yeah. Didn't know that. Him, him, and a bunch of his friends. I guess try to take some man's like, you know, things, and he he. Fought oh well, back. well, did, well, then, then, they, then, then they killed somebody. Didn't it make he did sense? Like, he did then like when, seven years. then when it, it makes sense when he say he don't um, glorify the gang shit. I've seen some of his shit. Does he have a brash approach sometimes? Yeah, to some people, you know, but I mean, you know, I don't like to talk bad on nobody or, you know, but I feel like um, that's just his outlook on shit. You know what I'm saying? When you first started making money, mm -hmm. what did you f spend your first million dollars on? I would say my house. Okay. Yeah. You just bought it off? Yeah. I would say, I would say cash my house. Done. I had, I, well, I bought two houses. So I would say between putting a, a substantial amount on both houses and getting a couple of vehicles. So I would say the real estate. Yeah, but you actually had people in your corner that were guiding you in terms of what to do, right? Um, In in a way, and not in a way. You had Jew unit. No, I had Jew <laughs> unit, but you had other people too. Yeah. You know, and it was just like certain things that you realize as you're growing. Like uh, shot money and um, like when I first came home, um, I had the condos and everything. And I know banks wanted to buy a house. So it was a lot of times where we, like 50 and a half the time, so everything kind of banked on Sean Money. And which I'm, and no bad on Sean Money's part. I'm not gonna say he's a bad guy, but Sean Money's uh, baby mother and 50's baby mother turned into real estate agents. You know, they turn. <laughs> Y'all hearing this now, right? They turn into real, Flav, you hearing this? Shaw Money's baby mother and 50's baby mother turned into real estate agents. Real estate agents. And it wasn't that wrong with that. But when I was gonna buy a house, I didn't realize, like, you know, you don't realize certain things like a person makes money off of you. To be in a real estate, they make the money off right. the house or whatever. Commission. So yeah, they both was real estate agents. So Shaw Money was like, like they was looking for the house for me and going all these places, but I didn't know. Realized why they was going out my way, but they made money off the sale of the house. Yes, yeah, like which three, is cool. Three percent, I think. Yeah, which is cool. But it, it was just certain things that you just didn't know that I didn't know that they made a percentage off. You know what I'm saying? That's why they was rushing me. So and, and like at that time, I think I would have bought a cheaper house. I think uh, if the Jew unit was more around at that time, because they was, I think I should have bought a house like maybe for four or five hundred. Instead of buying a house, maybe four million. Yeah, it's just you know you have well, you, no. You bought a four million dollar house? No, it might, it might one point two one million. Okay, one million. Okay, one point two million. No, four million. It was a one one million. One million dollar house, but this was back in what two thousand and three, two thousand four, going into two thousand five. You still have the house? Yeah. Appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Now that's smart because, for example, I had YK Osiris here, you know, a couple months ago, and he blew his first million bucks in like a few months. 
just done. Jewelry, balling out, gone. I mean, he was like 18 when I mean, he got signed. I mean, you got to remember, like I said, we, we, we was around people like Eminem and 50 Cent. I haven't even seen Eminem with a piece of jewelry. I don't think he, I ever seen him with. I've seen like that gold rope he wears sometimes. Or maybe just, a watch, maybe. Yeah. But you know. But, but not, not how he could really afford it. And 50 don't spend a dime. What do you mean? 50 don't spend money like that. Yeah, 50 always got jewelry on though. Yeah, but he doesn't, you got to think through his career. He don't really spend no money like that. Yeah. 50 save. He ain't. So you got a nigga like that. He'll buy cars and all that. But that's just because of taxes. Motherfucker be like, yo, I'm about to buy some cars or something. Like, I spend the money. They're going to take it anyway. Yeah, I mean, taxes are a motherfucker. I, I spent millions in taxes. <laughs> it makes you me know, sick. Just you got much a guy I like, when you got a guy like 50 around, you learn to save. Yeah. Because you can get, everybody get negligent with money, of course. You know what I'm saying? But when you blow it, you can't blame anybody but yourself. Yeah, I mean, Young Buck made some serious mistakes. Because the there's way. two things, right? It's called fault, right? Fault. Mm -hmm. Remember this in life. You always got fault when you fuck up your money. And then you got responsibility when you got to fix it. It all comes down to you. So fault is when you fuck up. And responsibility is when you fix it. Right? Just like a motherfucker say you're not working. Now I'm working. I'm running around. I'm working. I got... Podcast coming. Me and you got some business coming. Yep. Um, I got music, the loyal dropping. I'm back and forth. Just left LA Emmy's party. I got the weed strand with um Burner. Um and, and, and we working and, and Steve, like it's all a work ethic. Cause if 50 got more money than me, and he's working harder than me. Jay-Z got more money than me, he's working harder than me. Diddy got more money than me, he's working harder than me, then I'm not working. Yep. And that's what artists gotta understand. You're not working. I'm working. You believe in God, right? Of course. If you could ask God to forgive you for one thing, what would it be? Mm. Forgive me for one thing. Oh. I'm not a bad guy. Uh, I guess forgive me for any sins I committed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, I'm not really a crazy guy like that. So, you know. I feel like God feels like I'm a nice guy. That's why he keep blessing me. Do you feel like when, when you look at your development, do you feel that you were able to absorb your new environment as quickly as you should have in terms of, okay, I'm not in Queens anymore. I'm now around millionaires. I'm now around big money. Oh, I love that years ago. I'm, I've been over that. Like, I mean. But, but you still hear of Tony getting into some crazy shit every so often. Like what? Pleasure P? I didn't I didn't beat the guy up. Who what? What? I'm not gonna get into the details. I'm just saying that what, the every Jimmy, so often you the hear Jimmy some crazy stuff? shit. I'm not gonna get into any details, but there's lots of shit out there oh, okay. <laughs> around, right. around you. And I I'm not gonna get into it. Okay. We're not, we're not gonna get into it. All Some right, of the stuff I, mean, I can't even talk yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I don't okay? want you to. Go ahead. Exactly. Uh -huh. But I feel like you still you still the old Tony Yeo comes out every so often. Yeah, of course. But I'm not a bad guy. I mean, the I'm old, not saying you're a bad guy. I'm the just old saying Tony the old Ayo, Tony Ayo comes out every so often. I mean, I feel like this, man. In this, in this game, I made my bed, I lay in it. You know, I'm with one of the most craziest guys around, 50 Cent. You know, I'm not at Kanye shit putting clothes together. I'm not at Jay-Z brunch. <laughs> and, you know, I admire all these guys. I admire Fat Joe. It's just, It's just life, man. Stuff is always gonna happen. You you out you're out the hood, right? Motherfuckers wanna kill you. Right, Vlad? You gotta move to the sticks, right? We gotta stay low. You move to the sticks, you're cool. I'm a black guy. I'm in the supermarket. People are saying sorry for no reason. What are you saying sorry for? Wait, they say sorry for no sorry, reason. Sorry, sorry. What are you saying sorry for? I've been coming here for 14 years. You know what I'm saying? So I mean it's just it's a catch twenty two to everything in life. You wake up in the morning, thank God you're here. Thank God for your, your your friends and your family. Thank God for your experiences. And thank everything that you're still here and you, you went through. So me, I'm just, I'm a, I'm a guy that just, I'm a free will, bro. And I'm running around. We about to go overseas again. Thank God for that. You know, we was in COVID. Nobody was working. It was terrible times. 
I'm good to be out here making much, some money. Of course. Yeah, I'm going to feel good. I'm happy. But people, people put this image on you like we're the bad guys of hip hop. What about the good stuff? People don't care. They don't care about when we was in domestic violence shelters, giving back or feeding people. Oh, and everything wasn't for uh, clickbait and everything. We was doing that to kindness of heart. Like 50 just donated millions of dollars to Houston. Million. Yeah, that was dope. And shout to Ice Cold, Flav, Divine, um, everybody that came out to the show. A Boogie, uh, 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 you, you, you got uh, uh, Jackie, you got Ray J, you got all kinds yeah, of- Fat Joe's out there, right? Fat Joe, Jackie Long. I mean, shout to everybody that came out to Tycoon and supported because it was all charity. We probably made them what? Over, what is it? Over a mil? Mil? You know the number? What is it at the concert? A million? 800? I don't know. I think it's over 500,000, over half a million. And it all goes back to, uh, you know, Houston and stuff like that. Right, because originally uh, it was in Atlanta, right? Uh, Tycoon. Uh, oh, yeah. Do we have it in Atlanta? We have one in New York. We have one Jersey. Then here. Yeah, this oh, was, was Tycoon Atlanta? too. Because oh, I remember okay. the first Tycoon, Rest in Peace, Pop Smoke was there. And YFN Lucci was there. So I was like, I remember that. That was Jersey. It was a movie. Oof, free YFN Lucci. Yeah, that was a movie. That's why I always remember that first tycoon, Rest in Peace, Pop Smoke. Yeah. Yeah. So what's next for you? I got the Loyal mixtape, and um, I plan to take over in the podcast. I plan, I don't want to take anybody out of business, but I, I plan to, you know, <laughs> go hard. I feel like I've always been good, and, and like people love when I do my interviews with you and I love the people when everybody tells me, yo, do the podcast, do the podcast. Yeah. Because I keep it real. That's yeah. why I'm not fine for drop that episode. Right. You actually changed your profile picture. Yeah. I changed it to, you know, to Vlad. <laughs> to the first Vlad yeah, TV interview. Yeah, Vlad. Come on, man. Why you, you know, <laughs> besides Eminem, you're one of my favorite white boys, yeah, bro. Yeah, your you second know, favorite white yeah, boy? Yeah, yeah. You'll say you're my second favorite white boy, man. Okay. Yeah. We're going back overseas next week. Yeah. We go back overseas in two weeks? Next week. Next week. Oh, shit. So by the time this comes out, you're gonna be overseas. Yeah, we'll be overseas. You know, I'll take my pass. I'm gonna take my passport with me, baby. That's what it is. You know what That's how we're gonna end it. I'll take it with me, baby. There you go. Tony Yeah. Yeah. Some more stamps. I'm this is my sixth passport. Uh. This is my third Vlad interview. Yep. I like I like this guy. Everybody. And I came on this one icy this time. Look. That's right. Until next time. Until Peace. Next time, baby. Peace.